Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Just set this up and go. That loading time is already a bit shorter since we were able to delete the surface uh, for one of the planets that we've cleared. Probably won't even end up using it at this rate. Or at least we'll probably only end up using one of them. Uh, one of the two. And go. Oh, that's right. We were trying to figure out this uh, uh, fluid stuff. I think I would like to jump into this with editor extensions, actually. Um, so we can just cheat fluid really quickly and test the flow. Um, otherwise... Otherwise, it's going to take a lot longer to design, and then there's going to be flaws in it that we could have easily found. Okay. Uh, I did already grab that with a blueprint earlier. Just didn't get around to expanding on it. Alright, so wait, what is this? Did I load the wrong... I did load the wrong save. Uh, this ain't no SpaceX. Let's do this. My bad. Alright, at least this won't take half as long to load. Okay, here we are with our Arcospheres. Um, let's go down this way. Oh, and now that we've got that working, let's put... Let's put our cheat roboports back. physically go over there now. There we go. Alright, so right over here we're gonna add another block. Build it out with our blueprint as soon as possible. Uh, I can speed this up a little bit. Let's go scaffolding. There we go. And I'll just fill this part out. The bots seem to be struggling a little to get over here. There we go. Nope, they're still struggling. What? Oh, these are regular... Construction bots, that's why. Alright, that'll get done. Uh, let's grab our blueprint. I think I just threw it down here. And we'll do... an infinity pipe for... 
25 degrees thermal fluid. We'll do some power. And I hadn't actually committed to this part just yet. Um, no, I think we want to keep this part empty so that trains can drop off this stuff. In that case, maybe we should have more fluid storage, but I haven't necessarily got that much. Hmm... So we want to keep this empty and this full. Maybe I should move it so that we can pump fluid into here more easily. What's our ratio? Uh, positive 805. We're doing the medium recipe. I can live with that. Um... Actually, let's just leave that where it is. I don't have any sixes. I don't think we're going to put anything here, actually. Um, so, our rate for 25 degree thermofluid is 6.7k each row is only 824. It doesn't line up too well with this stuff here. Can I maybe... oh no. Um, blueprint. Remove the beacon. I want to rotate it around the beacon here. So maybe... Uh, we don't have room to do that. Exactly how many of these machines do we need to keep up with this part? We're looking for 5.8k cold thermofluid. 5.8, that is 78, um, and this would be 88, so we can drop 10 of them. Mm. So 5 on each side. There's no way to make that symmetrical. Hey, Carbuza? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We could maybe just use more room in this space. It doesn't have to be in this quarter, because there's not going to be anything here. Yeah, that's probably for the best. So, something like this. Um, and we can get inputs from here. These two are both going to be input stations, unlike uh, at the rest of the stops. Hey, Tasman. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold on, let's mark them like this. One, two, three, four, five, six inputs. The middle one requires 1.6k per second. 
Uh, which might mean we should put pumps down here. Or we should bring it in from both sides, or a bit of both. Um, but I think the 824 per second down here should be fine if we just have uh, a pump over here. Maybe. We'll see. Give me some... Give me some space pipe in my physical inventory. Make it a little bit easier. Hey Chucky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's the wrong place for that. Uh, let me just do this side and then copy it, I suppose. Now, I'm thinking one pump up here should probably be enough to supply this with 824... Uh, fluid per second. Let's void pipe this. Exactly zero. And we should see all of these machines working consistently. It just occurred to me as well, the output is going to be almost as high. Um, 1.6k. Let, let's do this first. And we'll test that this isn't getting overly full. It looks like it's fine. Yeah, up here would be the problem machines. And if we think of this as being a pump... Well, actually, why don't we actually put a pump there? This adds one more pipe segment. Um, and just for something to simulate what we're doing a bunch of pipe sections over this way to slow it down and then this is our void pipe exactly zero here um it's at 1.1k per second but it's actually climbing does that mean this is getting more full okay this this output is stuck I'm glad I tested that, actually. Alright, so we need to add some pumps. Uh, how many is this? Eleven. But that's not an even number. Didn't we need, like, ten fewer than we've got? We could probably... We hardly ever need cool thermofluid. So I'm thinking maybe just 205 positive from that one here. I mean, we're going to be net zero on cold thermofluid. It's not going to accumulate until we get super cooled. So I think I would like to knock off a few of these. That's not an even number was a great reaction. <laughs> Thank you. I think. Alright. So, if we've only got 10, that, that means we've got a middle here, and we can put this in said middle. Spadge's channel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Um, I, I could just put, like, pumps between all of these, but I want to see what the minimum number is to get the required flow consistently. Uh, and apparently it's not this. Although it could be... These ones have a thousand accumulated, so it could actually take a moment. But it looks like this pump isn't going any faster than 1100. It needs to go... 1.5k. So we'll add two more pumps. Um, I guess there's no... I want them at regular intervals. So we'll do... If we do every second pump, that's like maximizing the number of pipe sections we're going to need. I don't like it. One, two, three, four, five between all of these. Probably don't need a pump up here. Especially if it's only three pipe sections there. Let's see how that goes. It's still only 1100. Oh, is... Is this just too much of a bottleneck? Was that the problem all along? I was too harsh with my test? 1263... Uh, 1500 I saw just there. Yeah, it was actually this part that was too much. I guess I should have expected that, actually. Okay, so we probably don't need this many... pipe sections. I'll do this because it's one less pipe. And we saw this pump maintaining 1700. Um, so yeah, that'll be fine for the outputs. This would take a lot longer to test uh, in our game, and not just because of the UPS. Alright, so input here... Uh, I did this already. We only need like 700... Oh, it's not even 800. Yeah, 750 per second. Uh, a pump here might even be overkill, but I'm fine with that. Um, so then... We have to do, like, an awkward four to three kind of thing here. Or we could think of it as... These inputs require 1.5k, and these two require 1.5k. And these two. That's just changing it from four to three. Use mic. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, how close can I put this to here? I could even almost match that directly. The flow is going to be a bit weird. Let's put in some 
fluid wagons. Uh, here we go. Twenty-five degree thermal fluid. So this is going to be a much better simulation of what we're actually going to get under ideal conditions. Also, I could add a ton of 25 degree thermofluid storage here, which I think I will. Um, but that could go there, that could go there. And then a pump doesn't fit here very well, actually. Maybe... There's no way it fits conveniently. No! There's no way to have, like, underground pipes here for this beacon. It's fine. Alright, so that one's gonna have to have two pipes. This one has two pipes. This has, like, a few pipes. Oh, we can do this. But is that too many pipe sections before the input pumps? Um, let's just assume we've got enough throughput for the output fluid. Exactly zero. And we'll see if... I mean, it'll go faster from here when this is full, but that's fine. I could even do a 25 degree thermofluid drop off here and pump it all this way. And make that one a higher priority than this one. We could still have another station for drop off. Okay, um, it looks like that's not having any trouble. What's happening here? Oh, wait, what? Oh, this isn't connected. That's probably why. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's something I didn't consider, is we're actually going fast enough that keeping the trains coming in is a little difficult. 6.1k thermofluid per second. That is... Uh, one train every 16 point something seconds. Actually, it's probably closer to 16. This is the first time I've seen 60 FPS on your base. Uh, this is a uh, sandbox. That's why. Daniel, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely capable of recycling all that thermofluid as fast as possible. This is sandbox, yeah. Um, I've got to save with editor extensions that we've got cheats and everything, basically. Um, alright, so which one is... It's here, and here, and here, and here is the... That's actually pretty convenient. We've got four outputs here, and four inputs here. And we also want it to go over here for the negative 10 degree thermofluid. Um, that almost lines up perfectly. One tile off. 
So each of these, this one needs to go one, two tiles to the left, one, two, uh, several, and several. Okay. Five, and five. Oh, perfect, max distance. Wait, this is one tile off. No. Is that going to be too many pipe sections? We're probably going to need to add some pumps at some point. But let's find out what this looks like. I do want all of this to be able to go here, but I want this to be a super high priority before this pumps into here. So to do that we can just say... Uh, 10 degree, negative 10 degree thermofluid has to be less than, I don't know, 5,000 or something, 1,000. We should probably have at least twice as much room for the drop-off for this temperature of thermofluid. Uh, and I guess we're going to be reading from all of these for the sake of LTN. So in that case, it's going to be something like, uh, we can do 400,000 here. So when cooled thermofluid is less than, I don't know, 2,000, 4,000. Let's say less than 1% in all of this. that's when we're going to pump the new stuff into here. And for the pickup, we don't need extra storage as long as we go fast enough. Although, no, we can't easily fit it. Um, I do think I want the cryonite drop-off to be either here, or here, or here. Um, we can pretty much put that where we want. And I do want extra storage for negative 273 degree thermofluid and negative 100. Um, I could actually... I could put the cryonite drop-off on the drop-off side of this uh, for the negative 100 thermofluid as well. So this goes to here and to here, but it doesn't have to go very fast. Um, and that will mean we can have double the storage for negative 10 degree thermofluid. And actually, instead of checking if this is empty, we could... I want this one unconditional. Um... It's kind of hard to see the way these connect up. 
So this pump's unconditional. This one is going to be if this is less than one train load. I like that better, definitely. So effectively we'll have about three train loads of storage um, to cycle cold thermofluid back into the system here. And I also want the stuff that's stored here to be able to be consumed by this. Ben Wu, Ken Ken, uh, HP Crusher, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Will you play Space Exploration Point Six? Yes, absolutely. Um, the only question is how soon, uh, and I'm not entirely sure. Or at least, uh, I won't be doing another playthrough of this immediately, five days a week. Um... I'll, I'll be playing some other stuff. But I may get back into space exploration very quickly. Despite how long this playthrough has been. It's kind of getting to the point where it feels like this is Factorio for me. When you finish this game, so in like three years? Yes. Um... Ooh, that lines up very well. Considering we don't need... Oh. Well, that lines up less well. But what's our maximum consumption of cryonite slush? It's only 580. Um, I probably could get away with just having a pump here. Once a SpaceXer, always a SpaceXer. Yeah, maybe. Um, Alright, so those are not quite connected. I think the neatest way to do this part would be like this. Maybe we should make all of those threes just for the consistency of the look of it. Oh, this doesn't reach either, so yes. just gonna be like this, I think. Unless... Oh yeah, that could be a fiver. That's gonna be a bit cleaner. That, that's gonna be much better, actually. And fewer pipes. like that. Uh, in this row as well. This is an even number, right? Yeah. So there's no long pipe that fits here. Unless we want to do like five and three or something. But I prefer it if we have something that's totally consistent. I 
I can't go back to vanilla, it's like boring. Yeah, kind of. I mean, this just adds so much. And it's so well done. It, it, it feels like an extension of the game. Uh, almost like... Almost like the original devs did it. So those all connect already. Um, why don't we just continue our production chain all the way through and then we'll be able to see if all of the fluids are going to the right place. So why is this not producing? Probably because I didn't get it to continue producing. Um, if I do this, I kind of feel the need to make it look consistent. Um, and if I change that, I need to make sure the machine at the end gets enough. Which it very clearly does. And then... Fifteen hundred per second into here isn't bad. Um, but isn't that like a quarter of what we can make here? Six K. But then again, the surplus is... Wait, what? Oh, I think I missed that column there. The surplus is way less than this pump can push through. And cold thermofluid is in the minority um, for fluids that we need to pick up and take somewhere. So that should be fine. Um, hmm. If I connect this to here and this to here and so on, does that mess things up at all, or not really? No, I think I do want whatever's stored here to be available. Yeah, I already said that. Okay. Unfortunately that... Oh, this one lines up. Maybe that's enough, actually. We don't need this to have a big throughput to here. Alright, so then... This is already connected, actually. And these don't take in cold thermofluid at all. Cool. Uh, so we need cryonite slush. This would be negative 100. Something like this. Wait, why don't we have... Oh, because no crinite slush yet. Uh, wait, that's going into the part that we're trying to keep empty. Uh, let's not do that, actually. We want it to come down here. And we also want it to go directly in here. As a priority. Well, first of all... We can do this. That's one quarter of it linked rather directly. What's the rate? Uh... Which one's the zero? 4.3k. So over a thousand from each of these. Th this one's just like 271. But more to the point... I think we probably... 
should put some pumps in here. Uh, 271. Wait, what? Huh? One machine. 271 cold thermofluid. Four machines. 271 cold... Oh, that's per machine. Yeah, 1,000. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe just a pump up here would be... Fine, actually. I would love to squeeze it in here, but that's not really going to be possible, even if we change this pipe. Unless we push that all the way up, and I don't want to do that. Uh, I can't really... Where are my pumps? Uh, I can't really fit pump here. We could move all of these down. The beacons would have to move down as well, but I'm not married to... Uh, oh, they're already not in, like, a perfect square around the middle. So... If we move all of this down one tile... This part will change. But that's fine. Oh no. That stops reaching. Well, that's a minor issue. We'll see how much better this is or not. What I find fascinating is that the base game actually supports all this complexity, even if it doesn't require it. Recipes with byproducts, random amounts, multi-pipe connections. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's definitely very, uh, extensible. Point six messed up low-level modules. Uh, I heard it went from everything has to be three times to two times exponentially. Vanilla Factorio has all those things, though. When does Vanilla Factorio give you, like, secondary outputs that can be a nuisance? I can't think of any... Uh, I guess we can change these to this. That actually makes the whole thing look a bit more consistent and easy to follow. Let's just... well, we can't do that here. So that reaches now. Um, also, that has the wrong fluid in it. Also here. Okay. So only the output is on the small ones. the main output, rather. Actually, I think I will change these bits, and we'll just have these two as an exception. Actually, does that have to be... Yeah, it does. Let's move room otherwise. Alright. And then... Delete this. Copy this here. 
What the? Change the recipe. Back. And of course, this is the moment to realize that there are bits missing from our aesthetic change. That's a lot more consistent looking. I like it. Alright, so... So we brought everything down one tile. Um, so that we would have room to do something like this. So I guess that... Yeah, let's just leave it consistent. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. And this goes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, these won't actually be the same. Where? Where's my corner? There we go. Seven. And is there no way to have just the long pipe segments for this part? We've got seven, three, five. Three, three. This feels weird. Can we not make that consistent somehow? Seven, seven, bad. Five, five. We need nines that have side connections. Wait, no, no, we don't. Uh, how many tiles apart is this? Oh. Well, that kind of works. But then we need eight here. And then we don't get the nice connections. How about a five here? No. Maybe we can put some pumps in between and pretend that's like what we wanted to do the whole time. That's four tiles. Uh. There's no good way to do four. What if this one's a five? And this one might be a seven? And then that's three. We'll see how the throughput goes. Let's say that our void pipe is here. Negative 100, exactly 0. Um, why are these not working? No cryonite slush. Let's just void pipe this. Cryonite slush. And is that going to be enough throughput wise? I see only double digits being pushed by this pump. So that would be a no then. Uh, how about undergrounds through here? Then that's four tiles, that makes me sad. Uh, 
I guess. One, two, three, four, five, one, two on this side. Do you use a spacecraft to transport materials between the Nalvas and the orbit with the main base? Uh, yes. I've still got a bunch of rockets, but that's just because I haven't been bothered to replace them. Uh, I've got a bunch of little shuttles that are like... Well, I can show you, actually. Uh, about this big. Why can't I... Must be aligned to the 2x2 two two grid. Why would it... I'm surprised it would let me place those in the wrong spot, actually. Let's remove that. Remove that. Put this back. Put down a clamp. Or maybe here. Yeah, this is it. Um, this gives us about 50% more cargo space than a cargo rocket. And has just enough uh, liquid rocket fuel to take off from Nalvis. Too bad you don't have space elevators. I know, right? I won't have to spam a hundred of these in the next playthrough. So, Cryonite Slush Throughput. I could... I could put Cryonite Slush on this side. And make this one the empty cold thermofluid drop-off. Um, the only reason not to do that is it would be making it like inconsistent with this. But that's probably fine to be honest. Actually, is there anything old? Oh, I forgot. I can't search thermo fluid here. Maybe I could just click through until I find it. Oh, is that it? All right, negative a hundred degree thermo fluid. What makes it? No, not what, not what is it consumed in. Nothing, literally nothing in the game outputs cold thermo fluid as like a waste product. Okay, that changes things. That's, that's very helpful. That's good to know. Thank you, FNEI. Thanks for the advice. Are your blueprints available somewhere? Uh, yes, you can check out the Discord, and there's also a bunch of them placed up on Factorio prints. Let me just make sure I didn't miss too much in chat. 4D Tesseract Rotations, whoa, what? You can do a lot of shenanigans with... Base game oil processing, you just throw as much cracking as possible. Oh yeah, I forgot about cracking because... It's a problem that I've solved, like, had solved for so long. No more surprises waiting, but in SE I just found out I'm not getting any copper because I have too much oil and nowhere to dump it. Indeed. It's intentional? Yes. Nines that connect would help could do 979. Nine. Yep. Thanks, dude. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so... This actually... Hmm... It would be... Hmm... It might actually be difficult to have room... For... The set of um, the set of input pipes for negative a hundred here, and then the output pipes as well. 
Okay, this reaches up here. It's going to be totally fine. We're just going to put this up here. It's going to look something like that. Right then. Uh, I guess that's a three. Well, we don't really need to pump it down this way. In fact, we don't really need to connect those ones at all. These can just stay directly connected. This is a perfect ratio for all these ones. Um, so the other three we're pumping this way. Can we maybe just reverse? Uh, kind of like, like this. Get rid of the pumps, they're confusing me. Inputs. Yeah, there we go. And then, pump, 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 uh, maybe a pump over here, what distance is this? Perfect. So we've got a maximum of one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. That's not a whole lot of pipe sections between the pumps, so this can go really, really fast. Uh, and then most of the pipe sections are down here, actually. But we could fit adding pumps down there if we need to. Alright, so... So we don't actually need a drop-off here for negative 100 at all. Which means we can get rid of this. And this right here can be cryonite slush. Um, we could connect that there directly. And here, and here. What's this? Three, four. Hmm. About pump here, perhaps. I'm sure we're going to have to do more to make the flow decent. Um, but that only gets cryonite slush to our bottom row. We also need... I think here would be a good place to copy it up. We only need 580 per second. if we could put it here, and then 7 is not quite going to work. If I do a 3, we need one extra pipe. So we could do it like this in this instance. just comes down here. Uh, it's eight tiles. I would like to just have a pump here to even out the odds, but... or odd out the evens, I suppose. But it's not quite going to work that way. Alright, let's see... let's see if we get uh, Cryonite Slush saturated with this. Let's get our cheat inputs. Let's get our cheat inputs. There we go. Cryonite Slush. And considering that this pipe up here is looking saturated, I think we're probably fine. 
All right, let's delete all of our final product so that we can see this moving full speed. Oh, output 25 degree thermo fluid. Of course. Um, so we need to get rid of 2.9k 25 degree thermo fluid and bring it back up here. That is a large number. That is not a small number. Is i5 12400F good CPU? Uh, good question. I don't know. Sorry. Sandwraith, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Arcospheres are the vertices of a four dimensional tesseract. And the transformations are just rotating the Tesseract. It doesn't surprise me that they are something like that. Like that someone who had some math education said, what if we designed these things around this? Because that's going to make some cool patterns and stuff. Good morning, Frittle. Uh, sorry, Fritley. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, um... I'll worry a bit more about how we're going to pump the 25 degree thermo fluid away in a second. For now, I just want to make sure the inputs for these machines are able to maintain maximum speed. That looks like it's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loading... Input ingredient shortage. Cold thermo fluid. Um, oh, they're flickering so much. Super cold thermo fluid. What are we actually getting? 166k per minute, it looks like. 166,000 per minute is 2.76k per second, which is slightly lower than these machines are supposed to be able to give us. The cryonite slush isn't having any trouble reaching the end here. In fact, I suspect... I suspect this pump is unnecessary. I'm actually kind of curious to find out. Not that there's any need to. That would... That's a niner, though. No, it's fine. And then... How many tiles is this? Exactly seven. I'm thinking... If I keep going like this... Uh, the throughput isn't going to be there, though. Maybe. No, it seems like we're having no trouble whatsoever getting cryonite slush saturated to the end without even adding any pumps. And we know we're going almost maximum speed here. So let's try and fix cold thermo fluid. Output should be saturated for these. I mean... Not outputs should be saturated. These machines should all be going at full speed. Oh, what's this? Uh, your output actually is saturated. That's interesting. And I can't tell. I don't think this one's slowing down. I think it's only this machine that's being slowed down by output being full. This pump is only going up to 900 per second, and we need 1k. Um, okay. I think... Shouldn't that be the same for these ones, if that's what's happening here? Or is it because 
up here is getting saturated. 3,000 per second. We're aiming for 4.3k. Lower two different fluids are connecting. Note, uh, the 9 length pipes and the 15 length pipes don't actually have a connection on the side here. So, as deceptive as the graphic is here, uh, this is actually not connecting. No name. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this a testing world? Yes. Uh, because it would take a great deal of time and resources to thoroughly test this stuff as we build it in our normal game. Um, okay, so... I could spaghetti some cold thermofluid through here. As well. That might not be the worst idea, actually. Um, what if we had sevens? Okay, not there. Actually, no, yeah, this is... This actually should connect as well. can do this like so, although that'll be super inconsistent with the rest of it. But do we care? Um, and this like so. Maybe a pump here. Wait, how did we have... Oh, right, the gaps are different because of the beacon. Okay. Uh, that doesn't connect yet. And then... Seven. One. Uh, I guess this is going to have to be like this. This, this one's a problem. Hmm. We also would have to avoid these connections here. Which is just a little bit tricky. This is getting to be a bit of a spaghetti mess, but... If it works, it works. Asymmetry is okay. Blasphemy. Okay, uh, this can go here. And this can go here. And this can go here. And uh, this can go here. That alone might make the difference, even though we haven't optimized it, because we had most of the flow that we need going up this way. Oh, also, we were really close already, because that 3,000 per second going through here was actually only needing to supply these last 12. Um, so that might do it. It is looking like it did. Let's check our graph. Fluids. Uh, that's interesting. So, cold thermofluid should follow the graph for super cold thermofluid. Pretty much exactly. Although, I think because it's accumulating here as well, uh, it won't do that just yet. I can't type today. Indeed. <laughs> um, do we want to make any improvement? 
Well, what's what's our current rate of negative 273 degrees? 165k per minute. I wish you could just click a button and convert that to per second. 166,000 over 60. 2.766k. The most we can do here is almost 2.9. Hmm... Uh, it's less than one machine that we're missing out on. But that said, I would still like to try and improve it. So where's the problem here? I'm seeing... If all of these machines are working full speed, it's probably just that some of the thermofluid is coming here. Uh, and if that's the case, we can test it. I'm just going to fill this up. Wait, what? Oh, I ran out of cheat pipe. Give me more cheat pipe. So once this is full, um, we should see... It, once this is full, if all of these machines are continuously going full speed, then these machines should as well. If our pipe throughput is sufficient. Speed it up a little bit. Even then, it took a little moment to completely fill. 24k. Alright. Now then, let's see what our graph looks like. Uh, 174k, that is probably maximum. And cold thermofluid is weirdly below this. But it should be your exact ratio. 174k versus 233k per minute. Uh, 3.883k. And we're capable of doing 4.3. Apparently. Oh, this one. This one's output is blocked. Which means... Yeah. Okay. Apparently this is not enough pumps and not few enough pipe sections. Why is this one at zero? They're both trying to pump into the same pipe, but this one's prioritized. Hmm. But this one is working? I guess the flow down here is more than I expected. Um, can we squeeze in some pumps? This is... This is turning into a bit of spaghetti. I'm, I'm really surprised at how slow it is here. Okay, this one's doing 2.7k per second, though. Trouble is, it goes through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pipe sections, squeezing through this bit. 
not as much here. The positioning of these two sections is really unfortunate, or this one in particular. Um. Oh, also, I should probably stop the cheat fluid here. That might actually be part of the reason. Yeah, that might actually be the problem. Okay. Because these pipes up here should have almost been enough by themselves. Alright, let's see if line go up. Uh, line do not go up. That's kind of weird. This does seem to be going pretty fast, actually. Yeah, it's actually going at full speed now. Okay, let's remove them all for a split second. And we'll get rid of the fluids that were accumulated in the machines. Um, and we should be able to see... Oh! Oh, there's a dip. Oh, it's going up. Uh. Oh, right. Some of it comes back as um, 25 degree thermo fluid. Even though the ratio is one to one. Yeah, all of this doesn't get turned into all of this. That's why the lines don't line up perfectly. Yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So we're at 250k. That's our new peak, right? Maybe not. We got to 261 earlier. Oh yeah, here we go. We're at like 261. Uh, about 4.3k per second. That doesn't sound right. Per minute, 173,000 uh, is our theoretical best. Wait, what? 254,000 per minute. Oh, that's negative 100. Uh, but, wait, wait, wait. 174, okay. Can we just... This one only. 175k. I think I was looking at the wrong one. 174k. And per minute, 107... Okay, we got there. This is it. Yeah, we're actually going as fast as possible here. Alright. Um, let's... See if we can't make 25 degree thermo fluid flow fast enough to keep up with that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we're make we're recycling as much 25 degree thermofluid as we are getting super cool thermofluid out of this. Um that's kind of a lot that we have to pump. 43k uh 21k for each column. Oh, per minute, per minute, okay. That is just under 3k per second. Just under 3k per second, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, we're doing like a shared output here. This is only 724 per second. Um, so I'm pretty sure... If we just put, like, a pump here somewhere. I'm just trying to think of the best way to connect them, though. If that's a 5. And that's a 3. 
and wait, no, let's make that a seven. Seven, seven, one, bump. Uh, of course, this bit's going to be different because it's not wrapped around a beacon. And... Like that? Can we actually... Can we actually keep up just by doing that? That would make things very easy. Oh, I'll keep that for now. 2.75k per second? We need 2.89k per second, apparently. So does that mean thermofluid is accumulating? To what, uh, the output, that is? It doesn't look like it is. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it is accumulating in some places, but I don't see it stopping the machines. Isn't that always the ratio, hypercooler outputs 50-50? Uh, yeah, well these recipes are a bit different, because they use crinite slush, we get more of what we're looking for faster. Yeah, okay, this one. This one is accumulating. Now it seems to be running out. How did I even catch it? What? I think I just need to add some pumps, like, down here somewhere. Uh, what is this, a 7? We could make it a 5 and put a pump in. Or probably down here. Zero per second. That's not encouraging. Uh, maybe these parts should have pumps as well. Yeah, this one's struggling. We shouldn't need that much throughput, though. Each column is only 362 per second. So each pair of columns is 724. Maybe up here would be enough. seeing this one looking pretty empty. Why is this one full? Why is this one blocked? Seventeen hundred. Okay, this one's two point five, this one's seventeen hundred. A second. And arguably it needs to be like 2,000. Hmm. I think it would be a little better if we pumped this up here. I was also thinking we should probably have... We should probably have uh, at least one machine to make thermofluid. Only works in a space manufacturing. Mm 
Where's my space manufacturing? There we go. Um, and the input for this would be here. What do we need? Oh, we can do it with cryonite rods. I mean, that's what we were doing. Iron, copper, sulfur, cosmic water, heavy oil. Or cryonite rod, cosmic water, heavy oil. I think I know which I would prefer. Um, I don't suppose we can supply all that with just a short train. Somehow. I haven't tried this before, let's see. If instead of having these two connected like this... Uh, the bots are taking their sweet time over here. There we go. I need to get the uh, default bot, uh, construction bots and stuff out of this cheap logistic network. No jetpack fuel. I can fix that. Can I use nuclear fuel? I'm pretty sure super fuel doesn't work. No. Uh... Clear fuel. There we go. And one for the road. Alright. Regular bots, get out of here. They're probably in here as well. Oh, there it is. I was looking for a big purple thing. Also, we got some logistic bots, regular logistic bots going back and forth here until the end of time. Uh, let's just get rid of that. I can put it back, we've got a manual switch to start the whole thing, so the bots will calm down after a minute. Are you quite finished? Uh, we'll just come back here. It's fine. Alright. Uh, and construction bots. And get rid of the regular ones. Okay. So my idea is instead of something like this for fluid drop-off, we can do something like this. And the only physical input we need is one cryonite rod per 10 thermofluid. Um, we can put our inputs... Maybe there's a way to line this up so that it would be kind of like kind of like this and then I don't think we can I don't think we can get it all to line up in one go. So we can just put this here. Stack inserter, fry a night rod. And uh, stack inserter. Cool. Oh, we need the twenty five degree thermofluid to face. 
this stuff if we can. That's fine. Uh, and then we could have... I could either control it with a pump or we don't really need to add a pump if we just limit based on this. So 25 degree thermofluid less than, I don't know, 5,000 in this tank. So we're going to leave plenty of room uh, for trains to drop off thermofluid here. I could eat, yeah, I could probably even set this lower, to be honest. Um, and we'll need to connect this to here, that's unfortunate. And I move these down a tile. Still, still too far. Hmm. Okay. I guess we're crossing the tracks. Looks a bit tacky, but what can you do? And we're just going to set the uh, request threshold for each of these to just 25k. It basically has to be empty. We have to... If there's, like, fumes in here, it's never going to summon another train, though. So we'll have to pretend there's a little bit less. Uh, we've got room for 1, 2, 3, 4... 1, 2, 3... Three, four, five, six, seven hundred. Not counting what goes in here. Um, let's see. Heavy oil. Uh, what was this? Cosmic water. Only ten. Okay, so we can safely ignore that. Let's just say we've got one, two, three, four hundred extra storage. Um, for each of these fluids. So we're going to say provides uh, request stack threshold 40. We're going to request a full chest. Provide a uh, request stack thresh uh, request threshold rather for fluid 25k. And we're going to request exactly what can fit in here. Uh, 25,000, 1, 2, 3, 400. And cryonite rod. Whoops. Uh, exactly what fits in a chest. And we'll copy this number for... Whoa. Uh, we'll copy this number for heavy oil. And short trains only. Alright, so... Renate Rod. Uh, cosmic Water. And Heavy Oil Requester. Seems good. And then, instead of putting this here, I should be... Oh, I see what we did there. I imagine two of these would be enough. We're about to find out. A 15 pipe. Maybe we should add even more storage for this. It could only hurt... Uh, that also connects nicely. It could only hurt to have too little storage, not too much. The 25 degree thermofluid. 
Although this doesn't line up very conveniently. So we could probably bring this up over here. With the fiber. Alright, make those. Now, that is filling up alarmingly quickly. Wait, what did I just undo, the second one? Probably a small pipe. There it is. Alright, so... Graph. Line go up. Maybe I missed it. How do you control which tank train will unload in? Would it be possible for heavy oil to go into the wrong tank, for example? Uh, yes. Uh, I just haven't done this part yet. Wait, let me look at the graph first. Uh, we are up to 163,000... 164,000 super cool per minute. Our target is 173,000. Wait, this doesn't have cold. Why doesn't it have cold? Oh, that's filling up because of this. Okay. Um, we'll remove this when we're done. Uh, less than... I don't know, 5,000. Actually, if anything, I should get rid of this entirely. And we'll put in... I guess I cannot put in a singular short train simulator thing here. So we'll just put... I'm specifically using the cheat insert of here because when we go to blueprint it, if I've forgotten this, we can easily remove it. Uh, Crynite Rod. Whoa, okay. Uh, and then what we're going to do with these is read from the logistic train stop output. If it's trying to unload heavy oil, the signal that we're going to get here is negative one heavy oil. So we're just going to say heavy oil has to be less than zero and cosmic water has to be less than zero. Uh, and obviously with the solid we don't have to worry. Uh, Quill TV, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we're going to cheat these items here. Uh, we're going to cheat these items here. Uh, NL Hunts, thank you for the follow. Well, welcome, hope you're doing well. And we're going to make... Oh. Yeah, we would make um, thermo fluid. Uh, if we run low on it. Let's just test that as well. Throw in some void pipes. They are defaulting to void pipes, yes. Okay. So what's our rate right now? Uh, for super cool thermo fluid, only 120k. It 
does seem to be steadily increasing. Our target is continuous 173,000 per minute. Uh, and we've fixed, we've sorted out every other fluid flow except for getting rid of 25 degree thermofluid at this stage. We should probably put a pump here. Let's see. Line continue to creep up. It's kind of weird how slowly it's doing that. But I guess as we're doing a better job of draining the 25 degree thermofluid, uh, why is this blocked? Hmm. What if... It's kind of... weird, but... I think if this came down here... That's the wrong temperature. The way this gets blocked by this is a problem. We don't have the same problem up here, weirdly enough. Factorio fluids can be like molasses? Yes, absolutely. We need to do something about this. I wonder if... Oh wow, that was shockingly effective. Just putting it on the other side of that pump. It's kind of strange actually. Uh, I guess this is getting sucked out here before it comes this way. Fantastic, indeed. Yeah, that is a little strange. It doesn't seem very fluid-like the way this was blocked by this. Uh, so does does number go up? Oh, we're at 171k. Uh, that is very, very close to our target. So, why aren't we at our target? There's not enough cold thermo coming in, probably because this wasn't producing it fast enough. Uh, and now we're playing catch up. All of these seem to be working perfectly. Oh, we've got less cold thermo in here. We've been draining this. Okay. Um, that's interesting. This is almost going full speed. I bet if we fill these up or remove, uh, remove them temporarily, I can actually just rotate this. There we go. It's effectively full now. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we can assume once this fills up... Uh, production. That's it. That's... That's our 173 per, per K per minute. Cool. Uh, let's run this for a little while and see if it stays that way. It's looking good. I'm surprised our UPS is only 200. The save isn't that big yet. Uh, there's probably a few spaceships I'm forgetting or something. 
we've got like uh, let's close the editor editor uh, let's see we've got a bunch of spaceships I think some of them might be going back and forward yeah 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 because I used Hera for my test bed for that system free uh, antimatter where we have the ships bringing in the stuff that we need to run the cannons so that the cannons can fire stuff back up to orbit and so on. Although they're not even moving right now. Hmm. Alright, let's have a look. That is a nice flat line. That's basically it. So when we're losing out on 273 degree thermofluid production, it's because where it's because some of it is flowing, uh, some of the negative 100 is accumulating here. I'm okay with that. This is actually a pretty good block. Uh, let's make sure... So the only thing we're voiding is the negative 273 degree thermofluid, right? The 7... Oh, I think I missed one. 1, 2, 3, 4... I need to remove that one. 5. Where are the other cheat. I could do a deconstruction planner. Where are the other cheat pipes? Why are there eight types of infinity pipe? Uh, whatever. This is the right one. Five, six, oh, they're down here somewhere. No? Wait, what? Where are they? Well, we definitely want to remove... Oh, that's actually... That's actually just voiding negative 273 degree. Um, so we've got five here. Oh, there's more up here, I think. Oh, these two. I forgot about these two. Maybe place down a copy of the cell first. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, and we've also... We're also still cheating thermofluid up here as well. Which is probably fine. Like, I'm not concerned about being able to produce 25 degree thermofluid fast enough. It keeps coming back to us whether we like it or not. Okay. So the only thing we're doing is cheating input for thermofluid here, uh, cryonite here, cryonite slush that is, and voiding negative uh, 273 degree thermofluid. Last but not least, I mean it should be pretty easy, but we could still create a bottleneck here, is pumping the output uh, into here. This alone probably isn't going to cut it. In fact, I'm sure it won't. We're looking for... 3,000 per second to be pumped from the outputs here into our storage. Uh, I ran out again. Undergrounds. Okay. 
Okay. Um, that can go here, I suppose. That can go here, I suppose. That can go here, I suppose. And judging by how empty these output pipes are staying, uh, that might surprisingly be enough already. Let's check the graph. Uh, we of course, oh, whoa, 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 that is... A bigger dip than I was expecting. Wait. Shouldn't it... Is it actually stuck on input? Hold thermofluid. Negative 100. Um, so what's the problem here? Full thermofluid. And thermofluid itself. Okay. I probably shouldn't have removed those cheats up here. And I think I want this to be a higher priority drop-off than this as well. So these are both requesters. We're looking for 25 degree thermofluid. Uh, we can fit 200k here. Where, where's my wire? Go a bit higher because we can fit more in reality. Um, each pump is actually 400, so that's like almost a thousand. Uh, 800, 1632, 3.2k. And we'll ignore the extra little bits of pipe. Let's just say 203,000. Uh, and same settings here, except this one will have a slightly higher priority. Uh, and we can allow short trains as well. Switch that on. Uh, oh wow. Oh wow, it's already full? We're, we are at 60 UPS, right? Damn. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, let's, let's turn these back around. And I think all we've got left to do is just the LTM chores, setting up our stations. Uh, so this one is requesting Ryanite Slush. Let's go around, like, counterclockwise to make sure we get everything. These are already connected. These are already connected. Alright, so... Requester station. Uh, provider station. This is looking for... We'll just double this number. 
Uh, 406,000 negative 10 degree thermofluid. Cool. Good morning. Uh, Klishu, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Maybe I shouldn't set the request threshold to 100k if we're allowing short trains as well. But then I think uh, I think we might end up with like long trains bringing smaller amounts of fluid with that. Yeah, no, the request threshold doesn't affect the other end. It's just how empty this has to be before we summon a train. So let's just leave that at 100k. Uh, so this is looking for negative 100. Cool thermal fluid. And... That's not what I wanted to do, actually. Pick up station, min length 3, provide threshold 100k. Uh, we don't have to, like, put a signal in here for a provider station, but this is also full thermofluid. This is the provider station. I think that's, I think that's it. Let's do station names, that looks right. Let's get rid of the pollution. Uh, Crynite Slush. Requester. Crynite Slush. 203,000. Uh, request threshold 100k. Don't care what size trains, because it's a fluid. And then... Do we need any special circuitry for any of these? Nope, we've got the same fluid here. I could add more 25 degree thermofluid storage up here as well. I think I'll do that. That also means we can set this request much more aggressively. I think I forgot to do the 406,000 somewhere. Uh, is this it? No, we're fine. Okay. So that can connect here. Bots are being a bit weird. There we go. Uh, so we're looking for double that. Let's not forget to make sure these are linked. Same applies over here. This one's already good. This one's already good. Uh, we really don't need an extra storage for Cryonite Slush. We're going to be bringing 100k at a time. And... Well, actually, 580 per second? Uh, that is just under 3 minutes that it would take to empty that. So I guess it wouldn't hurt to have double storage for that here. And... 
nice to double. At least that's making things consistent all around the edge. Um, we've already got the signals. I don't care that these overlap. Um, because fluids literally take a couple of seconds to load or unload. Especially with these extra pumps. 16 pumps for a fluid wagon? Uh, for four fluid wagons? Yeah, that's going to take, I think, less than a second. Whether it's loading or unloading. Okay. Um, so we set this one up. Yes, good, fantastic. This is negative 100. Provider. And short trains permissible. And we don't have to put any more signals in here because it's a provider station. This is already giving us the signal for how much we've got. And then same thing applies over here. Wait, what? Except it is negative 273 degrees. Don't have to change this at all. And I th think that is our new thermofluid block. I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Yeah. So basically... Start here making thermofluid in the first place. Uh, drop off output, uh, drop off like waste thermofluid that comes back here. Turn it into negative 10. Uh, the negative 10 goes directly here and also to storage here. Wait, wasn't this? Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, it's kind of a higher priority for it to go straight into the machines. We keep this empty. This is a negative 10 drop-off. This is negative 10 pickup. And we don't pump negative 10 into here unless uh, this is sufficiently empty. Or is it... Yeah. Uh, if we've got less than a train load of negative 10 degrees, we'll pump it this way. Uh, it does sort of come back here as well, but... It's going to be consumed by the machines as sort of a higher priority, implicitly, by the way they suck the fluid. Um, and then we've got cryonite drop-off, because we're using all the cryonite slush recipes over here. Exact ratio of uh, cold thermofluid to negative... 275 degree thermofluid. Um, some of it will flow to here until this is full, but I'm okay with that. And I'm just checking. Yeah, all of it can flow to here when this is backed up. Uh, and we've got many pipes and pumps all optimized to give us enough throughput for all of these different fluids. And the 25 degree thermofluid comes back here. I'm quite pleased with that. Especially after seeing the graph that this was actually maintaining going maximum speed. Alright, let's blueprint this thing. And because we were a little bit careful about where we put, wh wh how we put in our cheat items, we can just remove this stuff with a right click. Why is there a big electric pole? Where even is the big electric pole? I'm actually curious. How did a big electric pole get in here?
big electric pole. What? It's here somewhere. There it is. Is that in this old blueprint? No? What? I really have no idea how we got that stowaway. Sneaky. Alright, um, I don't think we have to worry about the tiles for the blueprint. Train stop names, yes. Trains, no. Infinity pipe, infinity chest, uh, super inserter, and infinity accumulator, no. These are regular white area beacons, yes, good. Tier 6 speed modules. X-Files theme plays, indeed. Uh, I think that is it. And we're going to call this very definitely final version thermo fluid will not have to do this again. No way. 60 FPS and hello. Oh, Alex, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, why don't we actually just do these four? Boshaza, Shatcat, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. So we're going to put that into space exploration. Uh, I guess I'll just put it here. Let's not pretend we've got this organized. And we'll save that. Load our game. And this is going to take a minute. Now's as good a time as any for a break. I need to stretch my legs anyway. Let's get some words on stream. If you see 60 UPSCs in Sandbox, yes indeed. Alright, uh, preview go. Boop, boop. Uh, mute the browser. Go. Copy link, because sometimes I have to update that. All right. In about 30 seconds, we're going to start some words on stream. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck and have fun.
one more. One more. Only one to go. What could it be? We'll never know. Fantastic. Alright, let's continue, shall we? With some space exploration. And it's time to implement our new thermofluid build. Why am I hearing... What? Why was I hearing fluid just now? There's no fluid here. That's so weird. Alright, uh... I'm pretty sure a bunch of this stuff is in the right place already. But, I think I would rather not risk missing something. So we're just going to remove all of this. Except for the stations. And then... Grab our blueprint. Very definitely final version. We'll not have to do this again, no way. And go. Oh, wait, there was something here still. Wide area beacon is in the way. What? Uh, okay, I guess we're, I guess we're doing this again. And once more. Alright, so that was not a shift left click. And I note, even sober. Even sober? That's a lot of bots. Let's bring our spiders to the middle. That should be enough to get them to build everything. And there should be trains on the way pretty soon. Uh, I'm not sure that we've got... A short train pick... Oh, that's a lot of clutter on the map. Uh, I'll just double check. We've got a short train pickup 
cryonite rods, we do. Fantastic. Uh, same should apply to heavy oil and cosmic water. Yes. And no. Okay. I mean, I think up here we probably have short trains permitted as well. Uh, but yeah, we definitely want to allow that for fluid. Uh, I'm surprised how long it's taking... Oh, I didn't switch this on yet. Well, there's your problem. Let's make sure all the constant combinators are switched on. And that's not actually connected. Why? I even put... I, I, I blueprinted this. There should definitely be the wires. Alright, that's looking good. That's looking good. That's looking good. And that's looking good. You can tell from the little blue light on the constant combinator, whether it's switched on. Alright, so we need some more speed modules. Uh, I wonder if any of the spiders ended up with it in their trash slots. But it'll be a lot easier if we just send them back to the mall. Cool. What trains are coming here? Uh, only the Cryonite Rod train, because our train limit is one. Which would be fine in the long run, but I want to get this party started. Actually, hmm, maybe I shouldn't bother producing this thermofluid until rains bring it here. What's our priority on 25 degree thermofluid drop off on the old blocks? It's neutral. Okay, cool. So, pretty much all of our thermofluid should end up... That's surprisingly empty. Uh, pretty much all of our thermofluid should end up here. What causes more coal powering an electric furnace with steam? Or feeding coal to a steel furnace? What uses more coal? Oh, um, it depends. One thing to consider if you don't have any solar power or anything, uh, the steam turbines will automatically underperform if, uh, if the difference is being made up by solar panels. Um, but that aside, just the minimum power consumption, for example, on various uh, items, uh, various structures, is going to cost you coal all the time. Um, the coal that goes into a furnace doesn't get wasted at all. Um, but to compare that, you can look at the energy produced how much energy it takes an electric furnace to do its thing. Assuming you don't have efficiency modules as well. Yeah, you can do the math with how long the recipe takes, max consumption, figure out how much energy that is, compare it to... Where do you even check? Max consumption 90 kilowatts. It actually expresses it in terms of kilowatts. 
for the stone furnace and steel furnace. Interesting. Wait, crafting speed 1, crafting speed 2, and they both say max consumption 90 kilowatts? Does that mean the steel furnace is twice as efficient, uh, twice as fuel efficient? Interesting. Alright, spiders haven't quite got back to the mall yet. Um, I don't quite know if I want two of these blocks. I think I would like two of these blocks and to get rid of the old blocks, actually. So... That's going to be a bit of a task. Um, but yeah, the the way we did the cold thermofluid recycling didn't work so well here. Let's just switch off the drop-off stations. And we can leave the... Oh, these are both pick-up and drop-off. Uh, okay. We'll stop requesting... Over here. Leave all of those switched on. Leave these ones switched off. And... Copy-paste that across to here. And I'll... Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, I'll just mark these as to be reclaimed. only waiting on speed modules so it's not like we're losing efficiency uh, resource efficiency or anything here why is this not outputting though uh oh wait what cool thermofluid cold thermofluid what happened here Uh, cool. This takes cool thermofluid. This makes cool thermofluid. Are there bugs slash enemies in space exploration? Uh, yes, but not in space. How did these fluids get mixed? What? 73k cool, 300k cold, oh no. Um, I'm not sure how, after all of that testing, this is what happens. Uh, well, cold thermofluid comes out of here, right? So let's see. It goes there. It goes directly there. I don't understand. Eighty-five K cool, three hundred K cold. There's cold here. Wait, don't tell me. No, I just put the wrong signal here. Oh no. Oh no. This should be negative ten. Okay, so it's not the piping, it's that I gave this thing the wrong signal. And did I name it right at least? I don't think I did. Cool thermofluid. And 
this is... This one's correct, at least. Okay. So how do we fix it? This is all cold, right? Uh... Okay. Okay, on the plus side... This is all saturated, and the cool thermofluid stops exactly at the pumps. So I think... I think if we just pump this into here, that's actually going to fix it? What's the best way to go about it? Right about here. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That is the one thing uh, that we didn't test. in our super editor. Alright, let's get some undergrounds. So how much did we get delivered in that short time? 300k cold thermofluid. Rip. And we've done all of the... The only one that needs any fancy circuitry for the pumps is this one, I think. Fantastic. Here comes our cosmic water. Alright, are we pumping this? We're not pumping this. Wait, what? I thought I... Uh, apparently there are more missing space pipes here. Oh, they don't come in pairs, that's why. Alright. It's not pumping terribly quickly. Let's go down here as well. I don't know how much that will help. We should probably switch off all of the stations. I don't think it matters if we get more 25 degree thermofluid delivered here. Cryonite slush is already here, and it shouldn't matter if we get more delivered. Um, pickup station for hold doesn't matter. Pickup station for super cool doesn't matter. And this one doesn't matter. Okay. What was the deciding factor on how big to make your city blocks in space? Uh, basically, we can fit a long train here and here. Uh, and we can fit a long train just barely here as well. Although, uh, I realized later I could have done a bit better, I'm pretty sure, with how much space these crisscross bits take up. Um, but yeah, a long train fits here. And we can fit a long train here and here. That was the main thing. Uh, and these roundabouts are bi-directional. So in a future playthrough, I think I'll try making it so the trains can go both ways on the straight rail without breaking anything. Um, but the way it works now is the straight rail is one way, and the roundabouts on the roundabouts, the trains can go whichever way they want, which makes it very, very easy to 
with trains that go both ways, it makes it very, very easy to have uh, pick up and drop off stations that don't take up a lot of space. Thanks, you're welcome. Fluid issues, there's a nice mod to help with that. There is a mod called Pipe Overlays. Uh, I should check that out. Nope, I am not here. Good to see you again. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so our cold thermofluid is getting pumped out. It's going to take a little while. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. Our cold thermofluid. Also, these pumps need to be emptied. And I'm going to have to remember to turn those around later on. Okay, we'll wait until that's been pumped from here to here. Uh, I guess we're also getting a little bit of... Wait, where is that coming from? How are we getting super cooled right now? This one. Old demo flu oh yeah, because this is linked to this. Well, that's okay. Yeah, we'll have to leave this running for a while. Um, I think I do want to make a second block of this ahead of time, though. And we'll get rid of all the old ones. Alright, so let's grab our blueprint, and I think the only change... Oh, this has to go up here. That was probably the problem earlier. Um, the only thing that needs to change on this blueprint is this signal over here. And possibly the station name, but that's not actually functional. Cold thermofluid should be cool thermofluid. And let's update our blueprint. Select new contents. Uh, we don't want tiles. Everything else should be fine. Spiders are on their way. Uh, all of these lurches are happening because we're placing signals right now. The bigger the rail network gets, the longer it takes. Uh, every single train repaths, apparently whenever we place a signal. So it gets to be a bit much in a big save like this. But luckily, it's not like it's having that sort of impact all the time. What is... Oh, right, I forgot. Yeah, we built out... Or we were planning to build out four blocks down here. Wouldn't it be smarter to have less city block like design then? Uh, I mean, it depends on what you value. With space exploration, uh, so many products have junk outputs. This is a very common combination uh, junk data cards and 25 degree thermofluid. What we actually want here is boson data. Um, but we have to deal with these other outputs as well, otherwise it's going to block everything. Uh, city blocks are perfect for dealing with this. All we have to do is output this to another station, uh, make it a high priority pickup, and deal with it somewhere else. 
makes it much, much, much easier. Arcospheres are still in motion. Fantastic. We've actually got quite a few comprehensive catalogs. Um, what's the request threshold on these things? Uh, a long train. I think we're going to be waiting a while for a long train. Provide stack threshold 20. Yeah, we can... We can bump this one down. Why are there trees in space? Um, because these are the holy space trees. And we have not touched them. And we will not touch them. Prowling wolves, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Guy clicking, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing also. And uh, Dark Rail, welcome also. Same with other packs with lots of byproducts, right? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Alright, spiders have arrived. We got our modules in the first block. Time to build the next one. I was wondering what that laggard was doing. It's actually my personal transport. Alright, so let's double check all of our stations are correct and switched on this time. Already got a train incoming. Fantastic. And this is cool thermofluid. Not cold thermofluid, it's the output from this one. I just realized I probably could have had a couple more machines doing this, but used the uh, more efficient recipe on some of them. But no, this is fine. Alright. All nice and built. We've even got almost all of the modules done in one go. Uh, let's add some tags up here. Cool thermofluid. Hold thermofluid. And super cold. And we'll need to finish that roundabout down there. If this train is to reach its destination. May as well get the spiders to build this out as best they can while they are here. And let's head back to the mall, I guess. Till we figure out what we're doing next. So we need to do this because uh, with all of the antimatter fuel we're spending, all of a sudden we couldn't keep up with negative 275 degree thermofluid uh, to make antimatter. And that's bringing our Naquium throughput to a screeching halt because that's how we're bringing it back. We're not having any trouble making particle stream, it's literally just the thermofluid that's the issue. How empty is this? Not very. So this block is basically going to be out of commission until we're ready to empty that 
cold thermo fluid that's in the wrong place. Oh, that lag though. Five UPS, damn. Yeah, it's only while the spiders are placing things. Uh, it's rail signals specifically. You can see it pauses every time a rail signal is placed and then it goes back up. That 4 UPS is the average over, like, I don't know, a second or so. It's going to get bad again once they head down this way. There's our cryonite slush. Oh, look at it go. Very good. So how much power did these consume? Only 3.2 megawatts each. Uh, for orbit, that's really not that bad. I think we get that from each of our solar panels. 3.7 megawatts. So one solar panel more than makes up for one of these machines going full speed on nothing but speed modules. What's our fluid production look like right now? It's tanking. Well, it's not going to stay that way. Alright, what could we, should we work on while we wait for that to resolve itself? Let's clear out this old stuff. We've already confirmed all this fluid is empty. Waste not, want not. Just marking these for deconstruction is going to pause the game for a moment, because that's when it's going to recalculate the train pathing. Wow, that's longer than I thought. And back on Nalvis. Uh, where's our deconstruction gang down here? Way over here. Okay. Tree slash rocks blacklist. And go. I don't want the cliffs either, but they're a bit of a hassle to add to a deconstruction planner. Or, it's not so much the cliffs, it's that we would have to add every single type of tree. I'm not sure who they're catering for with being able to deconstruct only specific types of tree. Um, but yeah, it does add a lot of work to that process. Let's bring our scooters up this way. Clean up this old bit of rail. I don't want the trees. And how's our new block looking? Uh, this is built already. We might run out of scaffolding down here.
We got a bunch of cold thermo fluid already because, well, partly because it was at these old blocks, but also I think there was probably some waiting to be picked up somewhere. Apparently they do have enough scaffolding to get this, uh, get this done, or at least come pretty close. Oh, I remember what we want to do next. Alright, I'll just path them there. If they've got enough scaffolding, they'll get it done. Bring them back to the mall. And then... Down this way. We've got everything we need to make wormhole data. We just need to bring blank data cards. I think I already arranged for that. Oh yeah, I forgot. We stopped having enough blank data cards. Uh, we're actually bottlenecked on copper. I recall finding out that we were bottlenecked on this block. Processing core uh, copper core fragments. And we were going to add another one. Oh, we did. Why is it saturated? It's not saturated. What's going on here? Uh, did we get some... If we got some random stuff on the belt, it would have been stone. Is there stone in here? There is not? The chests aren't actually full, uh, day. The chests are full. Oh. Well, there's your problem. There's no station here. Alright. Let's copy it. From here and ah, I see the problem. I don't know what these signals were doing here, but they blocked it. Uh, they blocked the copy paste that we were doing. So now we've got a high priority uh, pickup station for these waste products. And we can get some copper flowing again. Uh, it's a very rough estimate, but I think having two blocks like this is probably more than enough to process all of the copper core fragments that we're able to bring in. And we get almost four belts of copper out of each of them. So hopefully that'll be sufficient. We could also go for a temporary copper mine. Um, we've actually got some. Okay, that's... Oh, there's a bit of stone here. I can actually fix that remotely. Weirdly enough. Did we get the same problem over here? No, this one's just slow. Although... seems to be... Provide stack threshold 160. We've definitely got that. Oh wait, this is how many... It's two chests per cargo wagon. Yeah, no, we've definitely... We've definitely got enough. This should be being picked up. How much copper do we have at our smelters? Zero? Uh, zero? Oh, it's being smelted right now. Uh, 212. Zero. Zero. Okay, I think we get the idea. There's 10k copper here, that's a little bit more than a train load. No overflow chest. Beg to differ. That's oh, this one. Okay. 
360 copper. We're very, very short on copper, so I don't understand why... Why we would not be seeing a train scheduled to pick up copper from here. Provide stack threshold. 160. Encoded network ID 2. That's what we do for all of the temporary mines. So that we don't throw it in the trash. Why is copper coming here? I mean, it won't get wasted until until it gets to 100,000, and it can be picked up from here. But still, why is copper coming here right now if most of our furnaces... Encoded network ID 1. Um, most of our furnaces... Are empty right now. This is literally our station of last resort. Negative a million request priority. That's pretty strange. Oh. No, that's fine. Um, it's supposed to be that this station can go to here. That's kind of the point, actually. Otherwise, it'll block other resources. We're not actually saturated. The core fragments, right? I mean, we are, but is it overfilling? We're looking for 96k. That would mean this would be mostly full. So, no, I think we're okay. Shall we watch that train, watch that train that's beginning, being loaded with copper ore at the moment? Uh, the one at the, um, uh, core fragment processing, I'm guessing? This is going to an Omni smelter. It's just that the amount that's getting sent there isn't enough to accumulate. Um, but yeah, I would have expected maybe it would turn around after we got uh, the second copper core fragment processing area here. Um, if, big if, we've got enough copper core fragments to keep this saturated indefinitely, that gives us another 170 something, like 176 copper core, uh, copper ore per second. Which sounds like a lot. Um, but yeah. So we still don't have blank data cards here. Is the long story of it. Um, and it is because we're waiting on copper. It's going to be a little while then, I think before either of these are... This one's almost ready to launch, that's good. I think we have another copper one here as well. Yep. What's our rate of production of copper? Copper plate. Uh, over the last hour, 67k per minute. Over the last 10 hours, 62k per minute. So, it's not like it crashed somehow. We just started demanding more of it than we can keep up with. Data cards and copper? Yes, indeed. We actually thought... We actually had data cards completely saturated for a while there. Uh, and I foolishly hoped that that would be the end of it for data cards. Alas. To be fair, we have spent a lot of research lately, uh, and that includes tier 4 of different kinds of research. So we are producing 
Let's look at catalogs. Catalogs are a pretty good indicator, I think. Without having too many variables to follow. Yeah, look at that. Um, we were doing literally nothing with material catalogs and comprehensive biological catalogs. And then they just shut up. So the, de the demand on these things has skyrocketed. It's been insane. Yes, indeed. Alright, so let's just pretend we've already got blank data cards here. We've got that set up. Is this our blank data cards? It actually is. I didn't think it would be. Uh, Naquim Cube and Cryonite Rod is also already here. It's literally just the super cooled thermo fluid, which we already have up here, but I didn't want to like pump it all the way down here. We also have to output a uh, cool thermo fluid. So, what we could do. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about this. This this could be kind of neat. Uh, let's go for some pumps. Do I not have pumps? I actually don't have pumps on me. Oh, I didn't activate my personal logistics earlier. Okay, I'm just going to handcraft a couple of pumps here. And I'm thinking it would be cool if... We can just have... Fluid in, fluid out. Uh, that's not quite right. Input output and we're gonna use red wire here connect to the logistic train stop output if the signal for negative 273 degree thermofluid is less than zero pump it into here if the signal for was it cool thermofluid or cold thermofluid cool thermofluid is greater than zero pump it into the fluid wagon and we could also do like our input chest here as well but we've already got this stuff being brought up here there's no need so we're gonna do one two three four arcosphere inputs uh that's a little awkward with the spacing here I actually do still want to replace all of this with the Veldak folder. Um, it's going to take up a lot less space. But for now, I guess we'll do uh, buffer chests here, 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 and here for the Arcosphere inputs. And we'll do a request chest here for Nequim Cube, Cryonite Rod, and Blank Data Card. Nequim Cube, Cryonite Rod, Blank Data Card. I imagine... I don't have my speed modules here. Also, this isn't going to be under a beacon, is it? Oh, none of those are under beacons. Whoops. All the more reason I should pack this stuff up. But let's just get this working first. We're going to do a constant combinator. Read from all of these chests. And connect to the inserters as well. I 
And the constant combinator is going to show, I think, one of each. Arcosphere, Lambda, Zeta, Epsilon, Gamma. Yes. And we need that one signal because the everything signal uh, returns true if there's a lack of an input. It's also kind of the way it works with each. Um, so Arcosphere, Lambda, Zeta, Epsilon, Gamma. Lambda... Zeta, Epsilon, Gamma, everything equal to 2, and we're going to request Lambda, Zeta, Epsilon, Gamma. And these inserters are not going to swing until there's one each of all of those. So we're not going to get, like, two of these stuck here. Or several of them stuck here, actually. We're actually out of Naquim cubes, though, but that's looking pretty good. Exactly one of each of these in the input. Uh, and then we'll just put a purple chest or something here for the output. Um, so this will be both a pickup and a drop off. Our request stack threshold doesn't exist. Request threshold 25,000. Uh, provide threshold 25,000, actually. Um, and because this will never be perfectly full, we'll, uh, for the purpose of reading from the storage tank, it'll give us like 24,900 and something, eventually. Uh, we're just going to pretend... Also, this will never be perfectly empty. Um, we're going to request slightly more than 25k. We can fit another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 900, not counting what goes into the machine. So, 25,900. And one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for this one as well. Uh, so we're going to pretend we're going to pretend there's nine hundred less uh, of the negative ten. Was it negative ten? We're going to pretend there's 900 less negative 10 degree thermofluid here than there actually is. And because the request threshold is much higher than this, it's not going to cause a train to come here thinking... Oh, sorry. I was thinking about of that the other way around. No, that's right. Uh, it's not going to bring a train here trying to drop off cool thermofluid. All right. So this is negative 275 in and negative 10 out. Uh, and we should definitely make the provide priority very high. Because this thing will stop if this isn't emptied. Alright, I think that one is done. Um, we could probably... What do we do with that data card? Do we need to export it, or can we... Well, I think the other data cards in this tier are going to be exported. 
deep data formatting is an option. We should get on that so that we get most of our junk data cards back as blanks. That's gonna that's gonna help a lot with the copper situation. Uh, let's see, wormhole data. So we were also gonna do teleportation data is a nice straightforward block. This one has to be done in a spaceship, and this one is going to have its own block, but we need Naquim processors, which we have been producing. I think, given the scale, uh, we'll just do these two in a block down here. Alright, but first I'm going to go back and get my inventory sorted out. And I'm not running through... oh, I am running through. Let's go this way. And that way I don't have to think about it. don't have to remember to tick this box once I get back to the mall. Uh, this is looking pretty good, except we need more modules. Let's get our spiders to pay it one more visit. And that should probably be enough. Uh, how about this one, though? A bunch of the cold thermo fluid is getting consumed. Uh, yeah, because it's coming down here and then going out up here. I guess I can just wait until we've got basically zero hold thermo fluid in this block and then delete the fumes of it that remain uh, and then we can fix it up we've already gone through almost a third of it or more like well we've gone through like 70% of a third of it almost right then Oh, we're almost at the mall already. Kind of exciting, working on the last few data cards. I'll save the spaceship one for last, I think. Since the other three... We've already done wormhole. Uh, teleportation data is straightforward block thing, and so is real reality hypergraph analysis data. Although we do need a deep supercomputer for that one, that was the reason we haven't done it yet. Um, I don't think we need to make another dimensional anchor. So let's... oh my goodness. Uh, let's try making a deep supercomputer here. It's just Naquim processors and these neural supercomputers that we've already got. Um, unfortunately, it is a cargo wagon full of Naquim processors. Plus two more to make each deep supercomputer. And I do see what they did there with it costing 42 Naquim processors. Uh, we've already got our gel right here, so so let's just do that, and that's actually perfect. this 
to a buffer chest. How many Nequium supercomputers do I want to let this thing accumulate? I mean, deep supercomputers. Kind of the same thing. It depends how many we need to... to process all of our junk data cards. Um, let's see. We rated this for... for two belts of junk data cards. Although it's looking pretty quiet for now. I think we just... Wait, what? Oh, there's not enough cold thermo fluid. That's why it's quiet. Oh no, that's bad. Oh no. Alright. Uh, why don't we just make one at a time or so for the moment? We can literally only make three before we're going to run out of... Three or four before we're going to run out of Nequim processors. Um... Supercomputer. Oh, it stacks to 15. Well. 720. I seriously doubt we're ever making that many. But we'll just limit this to... I don't know, 5 for now. Uh, so we need to request Nequim processors. Do we not already have a request for that? No, we don't. We had some freebies earlier. I think. Or I brought them here manually. Uh, so 160? That'll get that stuff delivered. And that's all we're waiting on. Greetings, Night Dancer. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so there should be a delivery lined up for Naquim processors here in just a few moments. Do we have more? Oh, we do have more. We're not having half as much trouble making these as I necessarily realized. Yeah, we're actually saturated on Naquim processors. We've got two chests full plus two. That is a hundred after the train takes these Naquim processors. Fantastic. That is most of another train. Maybe I should even add some more storage for this? Alright, so if we have 260 Naquium processors... Uh, we can actually make six. <laughs> we can make six deep supercomputers for all of that. Lots more storage, maybe. I mean, considering the stack size is one. As expensive as they are. So I think all of the other data cards we make here only go into catalogs, I believe. Let's just double check that. Uh, space. It's all of the space data, isn't it? Space data. If I search it like that, no, it doesn't work. Can I do a wildcard? Nope. Alright, space... Dilation data... Uh, only goes into comprehensive catalogue. Uh, how do I go back? No, I mean, where do I... Here we go. Space... Folding data... Only goes into catalogue. 
space injection data only goes into catalog and space warping data only goes into catalog. Okay, cool. I think I would have checked that before, but I just wanted to be sure. Uh, wormhole data, we're going to add... over here. How much stuff is in this logistic network? Just a few random chests, apparently. Uh, I'll head over there myself. We don't need a whole lot of stuff to build this. Construction spiders, I think, have done their job over here. Fantastic. Where are you going with that? Fair enough. Oh, what happened here? Cool, cool thermofluid. Uh, there's room for it in here. It's just... Okay. That doesn't seem that bad. We're only down to 215k cold thermofluid here. Oh wait, no, it's the cool... No, that's right, this is fine. We either want to pump it all in here and or consume it all. It, it, the main thing is it's not up here. Before we can fix this. Maybe it would be better to just... I wonder if we'd be better off in the long run just deleting a bunch of this so that throughput can happen. Considering how much uh, we're waiting on antimatter. Alright, this is actually working right now. This one's not. Oh, it's about to be. I think we'll leave it a bit longer. I'll leave myself a note, because this is going to take long enough that... Um, I might even forget. Emptying cold... Emptying slash moving cold... No, no. Okay. Spiders back to the ball. There's a black arrow next to the cog top of the window. Black? Oh, the uh, FNEI thing? Black arrow next to the cog. Oh, you mean back arrow? Oh, back arrow. I misread it. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, so then... We need red wire, red wire, not red wire. And set filters whitelist. Uh, and this was going to be, oh, I think we want a stack filter actually. Since this is going to be data cards, it's going to have a much larger stack size than one. We're also going to link these. And I guess for the look of it, we don't need that wire anymore. And then we request 2000 because the stack size is 50. Two thousand data cards in each 
of these chests. And we know it'll be perfectly balanced because it has to be completely full um, before a train will be summoned. And we've got our thermo fluid on the way. Good timing. Let's just double check. This was wormhole data. And this is requesting wormhole data. Fantastic. Oh, it's about to start. And we have no speed modules. Let's give it a few. In fact, why don't we put a beacon over here for now. There we go. That's definitely not going to bottleneck on the actual machine. Maybe we could use more outputs since we're stopping on emptying this. No, we're already missing inputs. It's fine. Okay. Uh, next. Do I not have rail? I do not have rail. Construction spiders. Help me out. So we're going to do the tier 4 data cards except for the ones that go, except for this one and the ones that go in a spaceship. Uh, we're going to do those right here. Let's start with signals. Request a station or two. Get placing these signals out of the way. Um, I wish I could see where the chests line up. I think it's six. I think this is where the first cargo wagon is. Uh, let's see. Yes, perfect. Alright, so... I wonder if there's any overlap. Naquim processor, cryonite rod, blank data card. Uh, cryonite rod, blank data card. Naquim cube. And two types of data card. Okay. Uh, and we need a deep supercomputer for the first one, actually. Let's go get that. We should have one by now. Oh, we've got three. I'll grab all of them, because I want to do the math on what it would take to replace this with deep supercomputers, so we can get the 95% return on blank data cards from Chunk. Those spiders are going to walk over some spaceships, but it doesn't look like there's any chance of them taking off anytime soon. Also, what is going on here? We have too many logistic bots. These guys are slowly draining. Oh, they actually come back to the supercharger. Okay. How many are in flight right now? It says they're all available. Does that mean they can't... Even if there's more than 50 flying, they're not going to explode? I could live with that. Although I guess it's not good for UPS. If we have this happening all over the place. 
I thought we fixed this already. Set it so that the... Yeah, we request a total of logistic parts. Or was this already saturated? Maybe I should use belts next time. But the throughput from this is so much higher. I mean, look at this. Alright, let's grab every single deep supercomputer we've got. Uh, since we've already got five, I'm just gonna say only put one into the network here. I don't want to spend all of our Naquium processes on this just yet. Alright. So we'll do the deep supercomputer recipe here, I think. We are looking for... Nequim Processor Cryonite Rod. A thousand supercooled. This one also uses supercooled. No, we did that already. This one also uses supercooled. Output's negative 10. Output's 25. That is a slight nuisance. Uh, I kind of want to wait till my spider's back. Oh, is this thing the exact same size as the old? Yeah, it is. For some reason I thought it would be bigger. I guess looking at the graphic, that's understandable. It definitely looks like it would be one tile bigger. Also need laser facility. Look at this shine model. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, get it done. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. But 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 belts. It's an outrage indeed. All right, and this one is teleportation data. Um, I doubt we're going to have more than one machine for either of these. Although the rate of consumption from this is quite low, but we haven't put... Look at how many modules this can fit. Eight modules. And the last tier was what? Oh, six actually. Okay. Okay. So that alone would put it up to two per second. Yeah, I think we'll just do... So we've got Nequim Processor, Cryonite Rod, Blank Data Card, Naquium cube. Let's do the Naquium stuff together. Uh, 8 times 48 is 384. That's weird. And what was the other thing? Naquium processor. I don't think we really need the requests on these, but it does tell us what goes here. Blank data card, cryonite rod. Blank data card, not 240.
singularity data, time space anomaly data. Did we set it up so that short trains can pick this up? Or was there. It might have been a reason not to do that. Oh, wait. It's, um. It's the other types of data from tier 3. Singularity and time space, they're already on long trains. In that case. In that case. Uh, I didn't set this up so that... Oh, wait, actually. Yeah, no. This is being balanced. I think I'd rather just get a long train to pick it up. Just... no, don't actually. If we put these together... Could you move over here, please? Uh, we can put the... the mood fluid input together. We could put certain shared chests in the middle. Cryonite, blank data card. That's actually everything. This goes here. This goes here. Looks kind of weird, actually. Uh, singularity data and time space anomaly data. Okay. We would need. I was just going to do this with a handful of bots. Don't want to connect those robot networks. In fact, I'm not even going to set up a supply thing for this. We know the 50 logistic bots won't ever break. Just gonna shove everything in here. Hey, Sifa Cat. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? Uh, so Blank and Cryonite is shared. This only goes in here. This only goes in here. And these two only go in here. Uh, we're just going to request a full chest for each of those. And uh, we need about one chest for each long train of stuff. If we just request one long train for each resource, um, that is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's actually kind of perfect. Let's just put purple chests like this. And we'll have our buffer chests. I can't put this too close to the train, can I? Yeah, I can. Except then... Uh, then we don't reach over here. Can we move all of this over a little bit? I don't 
suppose this is still going to reach. It actually does. It literally is max distance. That's perfect. So we're going to read the logistic network contents to tell LTN what we've got here. We are requesting... Uh, request threshold is one train load for any given item. Uh, we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different resources that we can fit in here. I feel like we're going to run into problems at some point if I just let them output to wherever they want. The bots probably aren't going to take from the chests equally. So we'll just do one uh, filter, stack filter inserter. I guess for the stack size one stuff we don't need stack filters. That being Naquium Cube and Naquium Processor. And then we've got Cronite Rod, Blank Data Card. It was good, thank you. Only three unions created in defiance of my factory. Uh-oh. Uh, Blank Data Card. Blank Data Card. Singularity data and time space anomaly data. Okay, cool. Let's do it like that. Uh, we're only going to request like one train load or slightly more. I guess we don't need to read from the robot network. That can be a little bit erratic with how the bots uh, how we get negative signals when the bots are moving things around. I guess this is going to be our extra, actually. So yeah, we'll just request one train load for each of these. Naquian processor 160. Uh, we need 8 times 160, which I think was 384. Wait, no, that doesn't sound right. No, that was 8 times 48. 8 times 160 is 1280. Uh, and then the rest of these are stack size 150. So, 16k, blank, 8k, and each of these data cards. Where are they? Singularity time space, singularity time space, singularity time space. All right, cool. Uh, and then we need thermofluid. And then we need to output two types of thermal fluid and two types of data. I think we'll do all of that here. Uh, I guess I would need another RoboPort over here, arguably. I wonder if... No, I don't think there's a good way to connect those. We'll do one type of fluid on each side. And... 
some chests. I guess just to simplify the look of things, uh, we'll do one data card on each side as well. Let's see what that looks like with the wiring. I think I can live with that. And this one's going to be different, isn't it? That doesn't look too bad. Alright, so what are these called again? Reality, Hypergraph, Analysis data, and Teleportation data. And we're looking for 2,000 in each chest. That's going to take a while. Maybe we could do a smaller output for these. Uh, well, we're already doing an output of 8,000 here. We can always force a delivery early if we want to. The sound of a starship arriving is actually so cool. Kind of nice. I like what it represents. Um, these are data cards, so filters, I mean stacks. Stacks to 50, right? Yes. And yes, of course. And on our pumps and stack filter inserters. We connect to the logistic train stop output. Uh, oh, I didn't even think of that before. Yes, I did. But I missed it this time. We need to set the stack size to 10. That's the simplest way we can avoid over-inserting. Alright, so we are going set filters and override stack size 10. Uh, this one's going to be uh, reality hypergraph analysis data. 2000 in each chest. And this one's going to be same, same, but teleportation. And the filter inserter settings are going to be exactly the same. Uh, as for the fluids, one of these is going to be uh, 25 degree and the other is going to be negative 10. Uh, depending on which is easier to connect and where. Hmm. This could go here. Actually, we could do like a fiver. No, we can't. Yes, we can. And then... That goes there. Output goes here. 
I guess it's technically possible we could accumulate more of one than the other. Fine, I'll put this here. That'll let us use a long pipe anyway. And we'll go some 15s over this way. Nine. This is four, isn't it? Yep. Uh, what about... Is that one off? I think it's... It's one off. No! Alright, so 25 degree goes on this side. Therefore, this pump is going to be 25 degree thermofluid greater than zero. Coming from the logistic train stop output. And this one's going to be same except negative 10. And then we throw some pipes in. To connect this up. I'm sure the throughput is going to be low enough that we don't need to worry about pumps. Let's see. 40 super cool per second. Uh, 40 thermo fluid per second. Full thermo fluid is actually... Oh, I haven't given it speed modules yet. Cool thermo fluid is only one per second. Let's give it some beacon. How much power do we have left? Oh. Yeah, that's fine. I'm sure most of the time this isn't going to be running for a long time. Alright, so we've already set our requests here. Uh, we just need to connect this up and switch this on. That's a lot. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I should name these stations differently. It's a bit late for this playthrough, but thinking about how I'd like to do it in future. Um, maybe something like... These two data cards are what we're making here. But then what symbol would I add? To show what this is about. It's a request to station for these things. Maybe that's the way to go about it? But that just sort of looks like we're requesting these two. Uh, what other symbols, signals do we have here? Adam Bomb, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I, I don't know. Let's just stick with our usual convention for now. Naquium, Naquitite, no Naquium. Cubes and processes, finite rods, blank, data card, and those other two data cards. Veldak has been following for nine months, one week. Thank you very much, Veldak. Not to mention the eight months. Much appreciated. Uh, are we good to go here? I think so. We can probably summon this train already. Let's, let's see to what extent we can get started here. 
Uh, don't need to change any of this. Uh, so it's thermofluid and cool, cool thermofluid. And also these two data cards. Okay. We can probably summon more trains. They're not going to have to come very often anyway. So we've got uh, eight months from Sheep Say Meth as well. Thank you. Uh, we've got another... We've got one more type of data card to make. This is actually... Uh, we are one data card off of Tier 4 uh, Deep Space Science Packs. Although we're going to knock off Mining Productivity 11 first. So all that's left to do design-wise is make uh, interstellar travel data. We need a nexus, which has to be on a moving spaceship in interstellar space. The faster it goes, the more... I don't, I don't think going faster gives us more, like, productivity for making data cards, but it'll make data cards faster. <laughs> One-off, indeed. Uh, can we make a nexus right now? I'm sure we can, but like... We need 20 Naquium Tesseracts. Uh, we haven't been accumulating those at all because they've been going straight to... Uh... To Naquium processors. Hmm... Hmm. How can I prioritize so that we make both? Obviously it would be better if we could just get the Naquium flow high enough to have everything that we want. Uh, thermo fluid output is a problem here? Uh-oh. Oh, maybe there should be a pump here. Maybe as soon as this train takes the thermo fluid, this is going to go fast again. No, I think we should definitely add a pump down there. Hmm. Not that big of an issue. Uh, but yeah, it seems like we're keeping up with the thermofluid to get our antimatter stream. Three thirty-two K per minute over the last hour, seventy-two K per minute lately. Okay, that sounds good. And I think the up and down of producing it earlier was actually because it was saturated. Okay, we we actually are still bottlenecked on supercooled, so I don't really th see the need to patch this just yet. The important thing is our spaceships are getting the fuel that they need. I see antimatter stream here. I see uh, zero here, but this ship is almost full. We're still catching up, I think, but I think we are catching up. It's going to take a lot to get to that point, though. What is this ship for? Oh, I never actually finished with that. That was supposed to be my night slush. More faster? Always. Uh, antimatter ship. 
shuttle is kind of a long way off launching. Okay, we're just going to have to wait a while for that, I think. But it seems like even just the one block... Well, it's not exactly just the one block. Weirdly enough, even though this one's busted and we're waiting to run out of cold thermo fluid here before we fix it up. It is still producing super cold thermo fluid, just not as fast. Uh, but yeah, it does seem that we are catching up to this. Oh, we've got our Crynite. And nothing else, because it takes a while to unload 16k with only four stacking servers. Uh, also, I thought... Oh, did I pick up... Yeah, we've got no logi box here. I think I probably had the spiders move this stuff. Uh, when they did, they got rid of the logistic box. And now they're sitting in the trash slot somewhere. Okay, you know what? Uh, we've got way too many bots over here. I'll just steal some. Yoink. And yoink. And what are you taking? It took some stuff from this guy and gave it to this guy. Fair enough. Alright, so Cryonite is check. Um, I should probably hurry up and... what is this? Oh no. Short trains only, please. I'm gonna send this one to drop off... over here. I'm sure it won't be long um, before antimatter stream needs more negative 273 degree thermo fluid. Yeah, short trains only. That was my mistake there. Alright, so we need to... How, how much do we need for the Nexus? 20 Nequium Tesseracts. I'm just going to make a chest here. Just going to request all of them. Some of them will continue to go to uh, Nequium processors. Actually, I might... How about this? We're just gonna... Read from this chest. Tesseract greater than... How many did we need? Nexus. 20. Okay. Tesseract greater than 20. I'm just going to use that like a regular steel... Oh, we've got one. Never mind. Uh, Nequim Tesseract greater than 20. Perfect. How many things do Tesseracts go into? Seven. Deep Space Science Pack 3, uh, Dimensional Anchor, Processor, Nexus, Wide Area Beacon 2, and Life Support. Yeah, I'm happy enough to have that be our solution, since there's so few things this goes into. And they're going to be so low volume for the whole playthrough. 
All right, so let's go design a spaceship. Uh, I might just end up... Nah. I, I could use the same design that we've already got, but what would be the fun of that, honestly? We'll get this one started, though. How big is the Nexus? Uh, it's kind of big, though. It's kind of significantly big. Is that the same size as these? It looks like it, but it doesn't quite line up the same way. Oh, I think it's... I think it's one tile larger. No? It's kind of hard to tell. How are we doing on deep supercomputers? That is the number that I requested. Fantastic. Designing a ship for the victory? Uh, no, just for... Well, maybe we could use it for the victory as well. How fast do we need to go for spaceship victory? 250? 250. And I think my personal ship goes like 240 something. Uh, so we basically need more or less this, but slightly bigger so that it can fit a nexus. And... What well, is the... Is it the Nexus that we use for Spaceship Victory? Or is it something bigger still? Have a Nexus running in Distortion Drive mode. Okay. So it is the Nexus. So we can use the same design for getting the interstellar data as Spaceship Victory, right? Probably not viable for Victory. There are three Victories in SE plus K2. There is a but. Oh. This is already at 750 degrees. Nice. Uh, I think this is actually number 14 or 15. Uh, 16. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, if this isn't the last ship we need to not bottleneck on ships... Uh, for Naquitite. Then I might even just stop there, honestly. Alright, so we've got this robot network covering this area here. So I think this would be the perfect place uh, to build our Nexus ship. We will, of course, be starting with Copious amounts of spaceship floor. And we'll remove... Actually, uh, I think we might want to have some train stations here to drop off fluid. It might be a little bit easier. Uh, we've already got antimatter stream here. But yeah, having a bit of space here, in any case, wouldn't hurt. Okay. Let's go... Way bigger than we're going to. I hope. Oh. I stole some Arcospheres. Uh, I should probably take those back. I should probably take those back. We didn't end up with Arcospheres in the mall or something, did we? No. Okay. Okay. 
Where's our fluid? Oh, we didn't request it. Uh, okay. Negative 273. Remove fluid. And request threshold. Uh, 100,000. How fast can this consume? It's only 73 per second. Let's just request just slightly more than one train load. Yeah, it's only 73 per second between the two of them. And that's if they were going continuously, which they won't be. All right. So we're going to want... I kind of want to build this thing around the Nexus, if I can. How big is it? Uh, Sporza, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It is... 8 by 8. Okay, so we can't go symmetrical with a beam receiver. I don't want to use a beam receiver for this ship anyway. Uh, this is the most compact power source that we've come up with. Although we could do... I was going to say we could do the same thing, but with a antimatter uh, reactor, but that's not right. Because to get the value out of 5,000 degree steam, uh, to get the 5,000 degree steam, we need these giant uh, high temp heat exchanger. Um... What's the ratio? 562 per second, and this thing consumes over a thousand, so two to one. We can't make it symmetrical. I don't like it. Um, but do we really need more than a couple of nuclear reactors? I seriously doubt it. We had plenty of power from this. Uh, 80... Well, this is actually only 40 megawatts. It can do 160 between the two nuclear reactors. We will see if we actually can do something with realistic reactors and spaceship. That sounds fun. All right, let's drop off these Arku spheres that I stole. There we go. And then back to the mall. Oh, d don't don't steal my supercomputers, please. Um, let's go with. Do I not have a request for computers? Doesn't look like I do. Let's just add them down here. I'm just gonna have it not get rid of those. Actually, I'll hold on to 15 of these. seems fine. Although it will cause it to produce more supercomputers, which I don't want to spend the Naquium on at the moment. Okay. In fact, yeah, that should be a zero. A 
I've got the construction spiders carrying those. I'll hold on to the supercomputers though. Alright, let's say we go for a nuclear setup. We can extend this down a little bit if we need more power. Um, but I don't think we'll be needing that much. Oops. Nice symmetry. Uh, all of this needs to go further up, I would say. We can do some shield projectors. How far are these from the middle? One tile off. One tile off is the perfect lineup for these. But there's no middle tile. Maybe we'll move the console back a bit. So this can produce, uh, let's call it 20 megawatts. This uses four, one, two, so that's six megawatts when we're going full speed, not counting the lasers. And we need to go a little bit faster than this. And this was actually really well balanced for power. So I think we'll go for... Uh, a little bit more. Probably this will be enough. So we're looking at 15, uh, 30 megawatts and change. Oh, how much does this use? That's a good question. That's kind of important. Uh, Nexus. Applies 2,000 container integrity stress? Well then. Isn't our limit 2,000 right now? We haven't done any more research. Yeah, our limit is 2,000. So we would either have to not have any chests, no, even just having one storage tank for fluids uh, would be a problem. What's your favorite Star Trek character? That's a good question. I would have to think about it. Hmm. All right, well, 2000 Container stress means we absolutely have to research... Ooh, this is getting close to done. 73% on mining productivity 11. I'm sure we'll have a lot of more resources when we stop re uh, researching. Alright, so Factory Spaceship 3 gives us plus 500. I think that's all we're going to need. But we're going to get another... Oh, this doesn't actually give us any... Hull integrity. Okay. Uh, where are we? Factory Spaceship 3. It's required for Spaceship Victory anyway. So that's going to be another 2,000. This is 20,000. Deep Space Science Pack 2. Hmm. It's relatively soon that we can finish this. Let's put off... Let, let's put off the productivity. Until we get spaceship... Factory Spaceship 3. We definitely don't need more than 2,500 hull stress to get this done. Well, container stress, definitely. I, I expect 2,500 hull stress may be a little bit of a challenge. Hmm. 
Will you end the run with the spaceship victory? Uh, we'll definitely go for spaceship victory, I think. And what are we looking for here? Multispectral mirrors. Stack size 50. Uh, we might mess around a little bit longer doing secret stuff. You can't end without doing that special ending, though, can you? Maybe not. Yeah, we haven't even got our power plant up and running at Foenestra yet. Also, we still have no idea what's going on with our dimensional anchor. It's got the power that it needs, but it pretends it doesn't. Ooh, secrets, indeed. Also, Dark Rail, Captain Muller, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. We can at least design this thing, we don't actually need the research done. Although I do need a nexus to calculate the hull stress properly. Have we really not had a single Tesseract here since... I guess all the plate went to other stuff. Okay. Thank you for the prod modules. And... So this is going to be uh, about 30 megawatts of power. Uh, I'm sure we could do six engines. In fact, this design here, or something like it, would probably be a pretty good way to go. How close can we put these... Very close, actually. But we'd have to have a gap back here. Uh, if we move these one tile closer to the middle, then they're going to connect with this. That's a problem. Although, I'm actually curious now that I think about it. If this only holds antimatter, and this already has water in it, I guess it wouldn't cross-contaminate, but I'm not going to bet on that. That's almost a good fit as well. I think we're going to have to waste one more tile going backward here. Unless we put our water storage somewhere else. Depending on how wide the ship is. I don't want the ship to be wide if it doesn't have to be, but if we're going for six engines, it probably does. Uh, right about here, perhaps? We're not going to be able to have our nice little door at the back. So one, two, how are we going to, hmm, I think, no, that's no good. Could we not have two of them? It was like this, okay. That might actually make things easier. It does not. Alright, so tentative plan A on that side looks a little... something like that. Not exactly. Uh, plan B, if we want this to be narrow, which I kind of do... We can fit plenty of plenty of antimatter stream right about there. We 
this gives us 100%, I believe. Also, where are all our antimatter engines going? They keep coming... Go oh, they go into our trash slots, that's why. And then maybe move this up a bit. Also, we can definitely fit this in a good spot. Well, given that that's going to go all the way out there, and we might double up on these. Kind of like what we've done here. That actually links together very well. Yeah, I like where this is going. Alright, well, we do have a bit more room on the sides than I previously thought, perhaps. Maybe we could have... Do we have two tiles here? We do not. Not unless we move the Nexus forward. Which I don't necessarily want to do. But maybe the console... Uh, could be on one side somewhere. If we have our... Oh, this could save some space. Given that we want to move this up away from here anyway. Oh, that could be really nice, actually. Yeah, I, I, I like where this is going. Oh, we can't flip that. Right. So, one. Oh. Oh, that doesn't actually connect. Oh, no. Uh. Yeah, we need... I'm, I'm guessing that's something I noticed on one of my older designs as well. Let's look at the old space truck. Well, those are a bit different, but that one bit of pipe in between kind of rings a bell. Uh, we could do it like this, but then we need a bit of squiggly pipe here. And also the way these work isn't so good. It only say on a spaceship does it need to fly in space as well. Like, really flying. Uh, yes. So, for... For the last data card, we need a spaceship flying in interstellar space um, with a nexus on it. And for spaceship victory, we need uh, basically the same thing. And it has to be going 250. Consistently for like, I don't know, 5, 10 minutes or something. Uh, I did see someone finish it, but that was... I don't remember all the details. That was Damsel. Probably best to send it back and forth to some other system. Yeah, we can automate it. That's not going to be uh, much of an issue. Uh, okay, we could either do it like this, or we could make it just that little bit wider and a little bit narrower that way like this I don't love either of these we can't have a nuclear plant in the middle otherwise I would consider having them like this but those three would still not line up like that okay so The heat pipe is also just barely in the way of this looking good. Uh, these would line up so well if not for this heat pipe as well. So maybe... Hmm. 
Maybe this is the way to go. Yeah. 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 Okay. One, two, three. This goes here. Uh, whatever. Oh, we could move the Nexus up and put the console in the middle here. Then we would have plenty of space for fuel input-output, even if we didn't have room for it here. Can't you move all three up one and use heat pipe? Yes. Yes, we got it at the same time. Fantastic. All right. Uh, I don't want that extra... I think this might actually add more container stress, if it counts the pipes as containers. But I don't really want that bit sticking out like that. Uh, and then we have, what, five, six. No. We could consider adding a pump in here to really keep this part empty. Um, but I don't think it makes that much difference. We can obviously resupply water pretty much wherever we want off the side. Um, we could fit this in here. We can put... doop a doop Hey, there's our spaceship integrity. Uh, so now we can actually fully build this. Container stress and hull stress maximum 2,500. Beautiful. Alright. And then, how close can we... I kind of like this design. Can I flip it? No. Let's see why not. No. Uh, that's actually a really good fit. We can have all kinds of antimatter fuel in this if we want to. Although, I'm sure that is ludicrously overkill. Then again, maybe we don't mind ludicrously overkill. Look at how well that fits together. Beautiful. Normally it's such a pain trying to fit the antimatter booster tanks together with the antimatter engines. So it's obvious that this is going to be where our resupply is. Uh, and then... Do I not have walls? I don't think I do. This is all very tentative right now, but... Wait, what? Oh, it lets me put wall ghosts through the shields. Why is this one... Wait, what is going on with these shields? Oh, we don't have a power source. Derp. Uh, let's just connect that for now. I'm surprised the shield stayed up even though we didn't have... Um, power for them. Where's our spaceship walls? Oh, they're not in the constant combinators. Weirdly enough. That is a door. There's our walls. Give... Give to me all of the spaceship walls, please. So we're going to go up here. We're going to see exactly where the limit is, where we can expect the shields to catch asteroids before they hit our walls. We actually need more floor up here, kind of. Do I not have... Any floor? Is this not in the robot? It is. Okay, cool. All 
All right. Can we flip these? We actually can. I'm pleasantly surprised. So we're obviously not going to make it this shape. That looks kind of weird. But let's see how we can fit our lasers in here. I want them to be as far ahead. There's only three of them. There's only three that we can put ahead of the shield projectors. Is this a new speedboat? Yes, it is. And it's going to be an end game slash uh, interstellar travel data speedboat. Um, all right, so we could probably, oh, I could move these back a little bit, I think. No, I could not. Hmm, I really want the Nexus in the middle, but maybe I can live with a spaceship console off to the side somewhere. We've got room for fuel input output here. We could bring these back a bit. Maybe that's not actually what I want. How many tiles back did I bring this? This many. Maybe I actually want to push these ones forward a bit. then it's the way these link together that the look of it doesn't satisfy me I think we're just not going to have wait why is this one not working A fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello, did you install the new update? I did not. Uh, Vilsonic. Good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. And also Daniel, I think I said so earlier. Uh, yeah, we're not doing the new update until we do a new playthrough. Um, I can't really... could have this one sticking out ahead, but really what I want is as much laser as possible, shooting things down before they hit the shields. Uh, I guess we can fit quite a few lasers here, actually, now that I look at it. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably fine. And we can move this back a bit. Make it nice and sleek. Uh, maybe that's trying too hard. Some more lasers here would be good. Just to be super safe. Uh, maybe more up here as well. That's a lot of laser, but we're only going to consume as much power as we need, basically. Let's get rid of those walls. And this part would probably be a bit more streamlined looking. This can be where we put the doors. Actually, yeah, that's fine. I've seen really large endgame ships, not sure if it's possible to keep it compact. 
We're going to find out. Considering that uh, this ship almost does 250, um, we'll see. But the whole stress pushed up by this thing is going to make it a bit different. Uh, but yeah, I think that is going to be good enough shielding. I certainly hope so. Uh, and we're going to put... let's put the Nexus up here. That probably does look a bit cool, a bit more cool. Uh, we could probably fit in a solar panel. Oh, we can fit them here. That's good. And... Accumulators. And we can do... Input. Output. Uh, connect like so. Okay, so this is uh, uranium, used up uranium fuel cell, greater than zero, I lied, that's the condition on the input. Stack size one. Uh, and this will be speed signal less than what? 396. So if our accumulator charge drops 1%, um, we're going to input more nuclear fuel. And we're going to use that for our speed signal. So if something is seriously wrong with our power supply, we're going to slow down. Alright, uh, I think... I think all that's left, really... Uh, we need to do water input. I think the neatest way we could do that is like this. Otherwise we have to add a bit sticking out over here, or maybe... Nope, that's no good. Also, we could have put these one tile closer, after all. Except then we can't fit the solar panels, and I kind of like having a couple of solar panels. So we don't burn fuel when it's just sitting somewhere where there's a sun. I think most end up with 3, 5, or 4k stress. Well, we're going to find out. It says it adds 2,000 container stress as opposed to hull stress. Um, if I can't make one just yet, I could probably simulate it. What the... okay. I kind of forgot... <laughs> Um, let's, let's, let's fix this. I think we might actually have enough, um, Tesseracts for a Nexus by now if I hadn't screwed that up. Because I forgot there's outputs other than the Tesseracts. So we're going to put... we're going to turn this into a filter inserter for Naquium Tesseracts, and this is going to be Blacklist uh, Naquium Tesseract. Okay. I kind of don't like how it goes so wide and then thin at the back, but... It's fine. Probably. 
Hi, T Hacks. Did you end up finding your antimatter stream problems? Uh, yes. It was basically not enough. Uh, negative 273 degree thermo fluid coming in. Uh, and there were some problems apart from just throughput with the old blocks. What's this train doing? It's trying to leave, I think. What? Cool thermo fluid greater than. Oh, I think I broke. I think I may have broken these when I changed the constant combinators here. Whoops. We're trying to stop using the old thermofluid blocks. Uh, and we've got this lovely design here. With one short train bringing in everything we need to make new thermofluid. Uh, lots and lots of thermofluid storage for when it comes back as 25 degrees. Uh, and then we've got quite a lot of 25 to negative 10. Uh... This is a drop-off only for negative 10. We keep that empty. Pump it all in here. Negative 10 goes straight here as well, but also here. We're using cryonite slush for the better, faster recipes. Uh, for the higher tier of cooled fluid. Also, this is the second least efficient... Uh, recipe for cooling to negative 10. So we're actually losing 2% of our thermofluid processing this, but if we don't, we need way more machines. Uh, but yeah, we've got a nice uh, counterclockwise rotation of all of our different thermofluids here. Drop-offs for all of the intermediates and for 25 and at peak, and we did test this quite thoroughly in uh, editor extensions, uh, we can actually get 173k per minute, or 2.9k supercooled thermofluid per second. Quite happy with that one. Alright, did we fix this? Almost. Let's say whitelist tesseract. Blacklist. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. Blacklist. Tesseract. There you go. Don't give it to me. Okay. So we just need 20, I think. 20 Tesseracts. What have we got? We've got 14. And one cube becomes one tesseract. Oh, also a bunch of necrium plate. Which we've got, sort of. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. Uh, we've actually got 16, 17 already? I might just stay here. I might get this done. I'm just gonna jam all of the plate in here. Prioritize this. So we've definitely got enough to get this done now. We just need the arcospheres to come back. So let's see. All stress is less than 1,000. Container stress is going to be 2,371. I wonder... Hmm. I do wonder if this is going to be enough engines to push it over 250. Considering the container stress. Uh, I guess we also need 
I could actually take advantage of these two containers right here for input-output from the Nexus, I think. The pill ship it shall be, indeed. I quite like this, though. Alright. Symmetry Gobra. And that's our 20. Oh, I don't have room for them. Uh, um, uh, spider. Wait, no, don't. Don't get rid of all that. Disable personal logistics and auto trash. There we go. And we'll take one more. Actually, I won't take one more. Wait, that's still 21. Alright, so we got our 20 Nequim Tesseracts. Uh, everything else we need is one Nequim processor, actually. Let me grab that. It should be over here. That's the wrong inventory. Uh, heavy assemblies are back at the mall, and I'm carrying everything else we need. Fantastic. Heavy assemblies are right here. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'll just... I'll wait till I get to, to the mall, because we're walking through a bunch of blocks. We're definitely not going to need all of this, unless our design for the ship drastically changes. Oh, I think I have... yeah, there we go. Uh, I'll just remove that for now. Sure to be streamlined. Maybe I could move those lasers up a little bit. Eh, that's fine. Right, here we are. Uh, heavy assemblies. Make some room in my inventory. Give to me the Naquim Tesseracts. Ow, what was that? Exploding bot. And we're going to handcraft a Nexus. Because why wouldn't we? Fantastic. Oh, I probably don't want to bring these spaceship parts back here right now. Alright, we are one quarter done handcrafting the Nexus. It should be done before we get back here. Uh, I guess we're a bit late bringing in our antimatter stream and water. Where are we piping all this water from? All the way over here. That's a bit much. And 
here. Uh, I don't think it's terribly unreasonable to pipe the antimatter from this train stop, though. the same? I'm not sure if it is. I think it's the same. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. So we're gonna add a drop-off Water. Requester. Six tiles from here. Goes there. Fantastic. And I think that just happens to line up very well. Yes, it does. Bring that up this way. Underground, go fur. Uh, we need clamps. And there's like a 50 percent chance that this is not going to be where I want it to be. I can probably live with... Hmm. Would it be better if we have the clam like here? Uh, if we put it here, we can't do the antimatter input. If we put it here, we need to move the door. It's uh, also the water input pipe would be a problem. I would love to just sort of put it back here. Hmm. I would be able to move this underground one to the right if I put the clamp here. Woo, almost 22 frames, how's it goes? Yeah, not bad. Tumbling, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. I think we will go for that spot. If I were to bother to move the entire thing, like one or two tiles, is there somewhere that I'd prefer to put the clamp? Uh, I think there is. If I move it one tile up and one tile to the right, for example, I could put this just down here a little bit more. That would actually be really snug. Okay. Uh, well, we haven't put fluids in here yet, so it's not that big of a problem. Also, let's see, hull stress 957. I imagine that also goes up a little bit because of the nexus. Wait, what? Oh, oh, we haven't passed our integrity check at all. That's why. Let's not stand on the tracks. All right, so we're going to make a blueprint. Uh, 
including tiles. And this is going to be, whoops. Okay, let's try again. Including tiles, nexus, ship. Looking good, thank you. Uh, we don't need that random Allen substation in there. We do need to remove all of this. And I think I'll just leave the spaceship floor there for the moment. Um, and we can use that to measure where we want to put everything. Alright, so this is all going to go here. I guess it's not like I could have started with the spaceship clamp and designed all of this. Didn't I have a deconstruction planner for spaceship floor? Oh, here it is. I wouldn't have even spotted that. Good deconstruction planner. And nothing up here. Alright. So we're going to need probably... Actually, it might be fine already. No, we were going to put it here. Yeah, that's a really good spot. And then... Like so. Let's do an integrity check. It was 570-something hull stress, right? It definitely went up because of the Nexus. Oh, also that was different. Let's do integrity check. 976 hull stress. I don't think it matters. I'm pretty sure it only matters which one's larger, whichever one is larger. Uh, but yeah, it does actually add hull stress as well. I don't know why, but these shops make me want to call them... These ships want, make me want to call them barges. They give me that feel. Uh, thanks, I guess. Spaceboat go burr. Uh, and because symmetry... Oh, also, that actually reaches... Our pylon substation. That's perfect. So that goes there, that goes there, and this goes here, fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Definitely. Can you already achieve that other mode for the victory condition? No, I have to research it. Uh, and it is... It's also behind Deep Space Science Pack 4. Oh, I haven't even clicked on the Nexus yet. Let's have a look. Uh, well, it's... It's an assembly machine. It has a recipe. Blank data card becomes interstellar travel data card. Presumably at like a one-to-one -one ratio. 10,000 seconds crafting time? I'm guessing the faster you go, the faster it gets. 
and yeah. I doubt I doubt if we could just run this for ten thousand seconds we could do it without going anywhere. Oh we can't actually fit that. That's fine I suppose. Four Naquim accumulators is more than enough. I kinda like the way the look of the spate uh heat pipe here as well. Better use speed modules? We can't. I'm pretty sure it won't be affected by a beacon either. Uh, where's my bacon? Here we go. Let's see. Uh, can I do rate calculator? 0. 0.0001 per second. I'm pretty sure that's 10,000 seconds. And yeah, it hasn't changed. Nearly three hours? It's fine. One data card in three hours shouldn't be a problem. All right, now let's, let's have a little bit of scaffolding up here so we can walk into our ship. And then all the way up here, I could just add one bit of pipe over there actually. Did this... Oh, it did move up a tile, didn't it? I forgot. Uh, alright, so what? 18 tiles, maybe? Yeah, that'll work. Or will it? Yes, it will. 10,000 ships, let's go. Alright, uh, so this is going to be water. We need to measure the water. Uh, we also need to measure our antimatter stream. Or maybe... Uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to put the logic yet. But definitely limit water input based on one of these tanks. Uh, and we need to actually request some water here. That should be fine. Oh, that works. And we'll just steal the antimatter stream from down here. Uh, maybe I won't even bother connecting it on both sides. Oh, that lines up very well. Calculated. Okay, not so calculated. Let's put a pump here and pretend that's what we wanted to do all along. And then, just like this, uh, almost. And it's going to be a bit expensive to fill this up with antimatter stream. It's debatable if we need this much fuel, but who cares. Compared to 2,000 container stress from the Nexus, it's not going to have that much of an impact. I could always... Hmm, this gives us 6x6. Six six. I could remove some of these tanks right here. I'm not exactly sure what to do with a 6x6 six six block of files, though. Oh, we could have lots of water storage. No, not as much as I thought. How about this? That might be a bit more reasonable. 
or we could have a Roboport if we want to. Considering the purpose of this ship, I don't think a Roboport is going to be necessary. Okay. Uh, so what about our antimatter stream? Oh. I see. Uh, in that case... Uh, what makes 19 tiles? Uh... Two fives and a nine, I suppose. Or if there's no four, so I can't use a fifteen. Or I could have gone for twenty tiles. That would have been one less pipe. Uh, let's do that. Fifteen. And five. So we got one, two, pump, one, two, three, four, pump. I guess it didn't matter. The bottleneck's gonna be behind it. Mining productivity 11 is finished. So from Stardust, our theoretical max rate of Necrotite. Just got upgraded to 182 per second. That is more than four belts. We didn't create a belt bottleneck here, surely. 36 per second. No, we're fine. Victory is nigh. Five more minutes. Yep. Just like the five minutes that it took us to get spaceships. Um, let's fix these weird connections already. Kind of bothering me. Shouldn't be connected there either. This is fine. Alright, I'm not going to worry about the logic until we've taken it for a test drive or two. Uh, we do need a ton of blank data cards. Hmm. I don't think I will... Uh, I could have a shared chest for uranium fuel cells and blank data cards here. We could have like 2,000 blank data cards and 400 uranium fuel cells in each chest. That's probably plenty for either of those things. Maybe we will do it that way. Uh, so 1,997, so that the bots don't oversupply it. 397 uranium fuel cells. Come to think of it, is a long arm inserter going to be a problem if we're going fast enough? Maybe I should make this one the long arm inserter. Paste that, bring it over here, it'll already have uh, the settings applied to it. 
I assume five in-game minutes. Excellent. I'm out for a few beers. Look forward to the victory once I'm back home. I see. I see how it is. All right, so we need like 4,000 blank data cards if we're going to fill this up. I have no idea. Excuse me. I have no idea of the scale of how many blank data cards we're going to go through in a single trip. Um, but I'm sure we can work something out. Alright, the Robo Network doesn't actually reach this far. Let's do something about that. And I think I'll just put down a supercharger. And we don't actually have blank data cards being summoned to where we make our spaceships, believe it or not. Um, I guess I'll put it here. Blank data card. One train load? Or oh, cargo wagon? No, we can go a bit more than that. I thought the blank data cards were already on their way. That would have been a pleasant surprise. Uh, I know exactly where I can get a bunch of them as a one-off for testing. There's always a whole lot of them just waiting here. because we don't summon a train until we can fill it. Should we research something? Uh, we could go for even bigger spaceship. I kind of want to see if we can beat the game without it, though. And we could go for better energy weapon damage. Uh, in fact, we can easily afford that. Is probably we've probably got the tier one deep science packs just waiting to go. Yeah, we can do that research at will. We'll see if it makes a difference. Uh, if it looks like making a difference to this build. I shoot just found out in my new point six playthrough that you can't make space belts, pipes, and scaffolding planet side anymore huh wait you can't make space scaffolding on the planet hmm that's kind of a nuisance honestly i don't think that makes it that much more interesting does it so you have to haul up a bunch of Heat shielding, LDS, and steel plate to turn it into much more stack efficient space platform scaffolding. And space pipe. Uh, copper cable, glass, steel plate, plastic bar. Hmm. It's not a huge deal since you can't prod module it anyway. Yeah, that's true. Just more stuff to move. Yep. Believe me, I would have noticed. If I thought... My first thought would have been... But the prod. Absolutely. Let's just jam this into our spider. What's the... How, how much data cards is this already? 2,000. I think we're going to get exactly what we were looking for to cram into our spaceship. 4,000. That's actually exactly what we can fit in the spider. I'll just park it next to the ship and we'll turn on personal logistics again. I assume once you get a space elevator, it's a non-issue. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of stuff that there's a lot of repetition 
uh, that's going to be taken out of it by the space elevator, which I greatly appreciate. Like, look at all these cargo rockets we made over and over again, and then the, um, and then the little space shuttles. Like, all of this could be dealt with with a space elevator. Or, presumably, uh, you could make multiple space elevators if there's a throughput issue there. Of course, but the bootstrapping is going to be ugly. Yep. Hideous bootstrapping. Alright. Uh... So once we're in this block, we can get our bots to deliver those blank data cards. Space elevator is late game though. Uh, I think someone mentioned, I, I can't remember, but I was actually pleasantly surprised by the sound of just how early the space elevator is. It's something like Material Science Pack 2, I believe. So you'll still need somewhat, some way to build... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll need... You'll need some cargo rockets for a while. Lehman Base. Meloxyl. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we got an N. Y-L-O-X-L. -L. L O X Uh do we have an X? I'm sure we have an X by now. Then again, it's not too common in names, is it? Yeah, I don't think we have an X. Let's just grab a Z and get that sweet, sweet uh, diagonal line that we've already got. Glacier Wolf, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so M Y L. Oh, chat. M Y L O X L. Fantastic. Going by the science needed, it's only tier 2 space science. Not hard to get there. The upkeep for it might be a bigger challenge. Yeah, that depends. There is an X. Uh, well, now there's two. I hope I was consistent in how I did it. Night Dancer? Okay. Thankfully, at least the barrels in which you'll have to hold a lubricant for space belts will be reused for the steel and scaffolding, I guess. Oh yeah, that is a bit of a headache. Uh, I guess you could make the lubricant up here. Night Dancer. Where should we put it? Over here? Oh, and this doesn't have enough power yet. Uh, G. That's a six. H. T. A N C E uh, E Fantastic. 
fantastic. Is this game hard for a beginner? Um, kind of. Factorio does a very, very good job of introducing complex systems to you one little tiny piece at a time. So, there aren't too many... There aren't too many, like, learning cliffs, and they are relatively small. Um, although, space exploration, if you started on that, it might be a different story. Okay, uh, we've got our blank data cards, and we've got our eight stacks of uranium fuel cells. Very nice. I thought I... I distinctively remember bringing... Uh, 4,000 blank data cards here. What happened to that? Oh, I think I can guess. Do we still have... Do we still have a trash station that would have gotten rid of them? No, this one, it should have automatically... Hmm. That's kind of weird. I don't know where our last few blank data cards went, but that's fine. We've got more than enough to give this thing a test run. You should definitely not start with the space exploration mod, but the base game lets you progress gradually. So if you're willing to learn no huge barriers, yeah, definitely. Oil used to be a little bit tricky. Uh, because there didn't used to be uh, recipes. What am I looking for? Let me just put down an oil refinery. Oh, here's one. Uh, there didn't used to be a recipe that just turned crude oil straight into petroleum gas. Um, you had to get heavy oil, light oil, and petroleum out of, uh, basically the other recipe looked a lot like this one. And then if you didn't get cracking, uh, literally like the recipe called cracking recipes, um, you didn't have a way to get rid of certain fluids that, like petroleum is the one that you need the most of by far, and heavy can crack to light, light can crack to petroleum. Uh, but the research for cracking actually required oil as well. So if you didn't have a whole lot of storage space, you could run into some problems there. But they added a very basic oil recipe that just makes petroleum. Um, Alright, I kind of want more antimatter stream before we go. Can I crank up the priority on this? Oh, it's negative priority. Well, there's your problem. I can see why I would have lowered the priority on that, but still. We have a whole bunch of it over here. Maybe I could pilfer some. It's going to be a bit of a nuisance to link those pipes, though. I'm sure we're making antimatter quite quickly. 600 per second over here, and this one's a bit empty right now. But yeah, maybe I should even... I think I've got this one set as a higher priority. I don't. The AAI part does change a lot of stuff early stuff? AAI stuff? Oh, like the containers? You should not start with Factorio if you want a life. Factorio is never ending. Just ten minutes more? A little bit. Crosbow, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay. I kind of want this antimatter, though. So we're going to pipe spaghetti. Oh, 
Let's see where this lines up. Right about here. I should probably stop carrying all these pipes. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. And then... Uh, why don't we just connect these? It won't have that high of a flow rate, but we do have access to all of that antimatter fluid now. So what is this? Uh, 50k times 14. Uh, that's a lot. What, 700,000? Yeah. 700,000 antimatter fuel, and that's after I removed some of the containers. Uh, we've got our uranium fuel cells. I'll... I'll get the, uh... system warming up already. Used up fuel cell. Wait, that didn't work? Read hand contents pulse. I forgot about that. Condition on this. Oh, this is wrong. Okay. Used up your... No! Oh, no. Used up uranium fuel cell greater than zero is what that was supposed to be. So that we could keep these perfectly in sync. Well, I guess we don't need that constant combinator anymore. I've been addicted to Factorio since 2016, when it first came out on Steam. Someday I'll finish it. Indeed. Hopefully before Factorio 2. Uh, we're doing our... Normally I use a red wire to input to this. We can always change it later. And I'm not doing... I'm not automating this ship for now. This is for testing purposes. Alright, so we're waiting till this reaches 500 degrees. Um, and then... Well, we could probably go out to the edge of the solar system on these solar panels before that happens. But... We're pumping a lot of power into defenses to see if we can keep up 250. I should definitely bring a bunch of spaceship wall. I've already got that. Spaceship floor, lasers. All good. And we're not exactly full on antimatter stream, but we've got way more than enough for a joyride. Uh, let's set the clamp IDs on this. What should our clamp ID for the Nexus ship be? Let's see. Nexus. Uh, item ID 223. Sure, why not? Pretty sure we're not taking that anywhere. And we're just going to add a constant combinator here. Clamp. Uh, using right. 223. Target left. 
two, two, three. I think in a future playthrough I'll avoid this because of how the construction ships clamp together. Um, but it's fine for now. Also, we need an output for this. And I'm actually a little bit shocked to realize I don't have room for it. There's only a 1 by X set of tiles up here. There's no room over here. I could remove this one laser. Or I could remove uh, one or two of our accumulators. We probably don't need this laser turret. Probably. We probably don't need four Naquium accumulators either. But... The odds of that one laser turret making that big of a difference are low, to say the least. Also, I guess if we're putting in two chests of data cards, pretend, almost, we should have two chests for output. There, we, we found a reason to be symmetrical. It's fine. We're not going to go over our container stress, are we? Nope. That one chest isn't going to make a whole lot of difference either. Okay. But I will consider trimming some of this stuff. Alright, should we go for a joyride? Even though we don't have maximum fuel? Our heat is up already. Where should we target? There's no benefit except for testing to go through um, dense asteroids. Which is to say, let's go through some dense asteroids. Let's aim for Slumberland. And that's why I can't live without Bob's inserters. Being able to modify them saves so much space. Yeah. Uh, is Rake? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's go on a little journey. And... What is going on? Why is our top speed 14 and it's dropping? Uh, do we have power? We do not have power. What happened? What's, what's wrong with our power? We've got heat. We've got water. We've got... Six condenser turbines. Uh, what? Six gigawatts. Oh, how much does the Nexus use? I forgot to even check that. It doesn't say here. Uh, okay. It just stopped. Forty-five megawatts at least. Hmm. Considering we have like thirty... I think that might actually be a problem. It would be great if uh, the Nexus told us how much power it uses. Rate calculator on energy? Yeah. Well, this, this ship's going to need a pretty big overhaul. We're obviously going to need um, high temperature. point. We need like 60 megawatts here. So one high temp turbine generator is going to be way more than enough. But we can't pull this off with uh, condenser turbines. Although we did get some... We did not get some data because we're barely moving. 
Uh, I guess it's going to be rip one data card that went into this. Elvis Orbit. Back we go. I deactivate it until your ship leaves the solar system. Uh, well, it's going to consume the Naquium accumulators in like 10 seconds or something. Uh, yeah, I could put a bunch of containers here to simulate like 2,000 container stress, and I'd be curious to see... Actually, I might do that. I actually do want to see how how effective these defenses are if we go 250. We can do that much at least. Let's see. Check. We were aiming for like 23, 2400 container stress uh, to simulate this. And I need some other containers. Twenty-three hundred? Alright, I'm curious to see how fast our ship gets now. We should have plenty of power. Yeah, we've got plenty. I believe. Accumulator charge is... Oh, we just got back home. That would probably help as well. Just can't use a ship-wide electric network. Yeah, no, we're going to build one with a high-temp turbine generator. Which unfortunately means um, either antimatter fuel, uh, an antimatter reactor, or an energy beam. Considering the size of the Nexus... I think we're going to go for an antimatter reactor. Probably two of them, if only for symmetry and fuel efficiency. And then a pair of... I was going to say a pair of high temp tub, uh, heat exchangers, but actually... Half a gigawatt. is going to be way more power than we need. So we'll probably just go with like this design. And we put a antimatter reactor here. That means we could almost just fit... Oh, we could probably just fit a nexus like that. Hmm... Uh, the top speed of this thing is like 135, right? And we've already got less than 2,000 container stress. So I think we are going to need more than six engines as well. I think I do like this design, like if we can continue this up here. And that could be kind of cool. Alright, this ship is going to get significantly bigger. But before we do that, uh, I do want to take it on another little joyride. What was that place called again? Slumberland. Food coma approaching? Sounds good. The tiny add-on power poles are quite useful. Yep. Alright. I'm just curious to see how effective these defenses are, uh, if we're going quite fast. I don't think we're going to get quite fast until we remove some of this container stress. But the container stress artificially causes bigger asteroids to spawn as well. So I might trim it bit by bit. And see if we can go over 250 with the maximum 
container stress for this ship. But considering how our acceleration is dropping off, I think we can already do this. It doesn't actually recalculate when you remove things automatically. How's our power? Ooh, surprisingly bad. Okay. You know what? We're turning back. Uh, I don't think it's worth testing this any further. And we're just going to build this with uh, high temp steam. Slumberland equals a planet that sells beds. Yes. Absolutely. Alright, so I got the Nexus in my pocket. Uh, how long until we get back? Five seconds? I think I'll copy this layout for... Uh, maybe the walls as well. Yeah, let's, let's preserve the front of this ship. I kind of like it. Walls, lasers, and energy shields. Just gonna put that here for now. And we're gonna get rid of... Well, let's not waste the water. It's not exactly free in orbit. What do we got? Six containers here? Turn off that constant combinator. And I think we'll keep these where they are. Um, because I want to just extend this up here anyway. Uh, could you just stop for now? There we go. rid of this. Uh, rip all of that nuclear fuel. It's fine. Actually, yeah, don't... Don't kill the water until we've drained it. Oh, and make this one uh, unconditional. Uh, anything not equal to zero. There we go. These are already... Yeah, we don't need these. We're going to be moving all of this stuff up a bit. So we'll pick that up for now. I hope eight engines is going to be enough, uh, enough, otherwise we're going to have to make the ship wider. It's only draining a thousand per second. But I really don't want to waste it all. Alright, um, let's just push this forward as far as it might have to go. And we're going to be needing a high temp heat exchanger, a high temp 
turbine generator. Since this is already going to be slightly asymmetrical, uh, maybe I would like to have the nexus on one side of it. Empty matter reactor. We could maybe have a pair of these. I don't think we need a pair of them, though. But then... I really want to get decent fuel efficiency. We can at least have a 100% NAVA bonus. I just wish this would link better. Maybe like this? What is taking you so long? Uh, let's move that up there. Also, I didn't realize antimatter reactors found their way up here already. I don't recall requesting them over here. But I guess I did. No? Oh, yep, here they are. Hmm. Oh yeah, because we were going to put them in one of the construction ships to take to Foenestra. Okay. Uh, we can put this like that. It's going to be super overkill. But at least it looks pretty neat. And we would need water to come up here. That's actually kind of a good fit. And a few condenser turbines, maybe just a couple even, except there isn't a good spot to fit them. This is the kind of thing that shouldn't get imbalanced, but it will. So let's do this, I guess. Pylon substation. That is so much space just for power. I think I just want to do this layout again. I'm pretty sure we calculated that is more than enough power. Yeah, since we can get like half a gigawatt more than half a gigawatt out of this, with the bottleneck being this part. Um, and we only need like 50, 60 or so megawatts. I don't think we can do much better than this layout. Um, but if we do use antimatter reactor, it's just going to be the one of them. It's going to be a terrible waste of antimatter fuel. We could use a beam, but that makes the ship that much bigger. But maybe I don't care that much. Uh, one of the things that... One of the things that I like about the beam reactor having a middle tile is we can have this little door here. But I would have to move all of this, which I don't particularly want to do. I wouldn't hesitate if this was editor extensions. Hmm. 
Let's put our little blueprint up here tentatively. And this would go... Well, that water wouldn't be there. Somewhere like this. We could just give up on keeping it in the middle. Plenty of room for the nexus on the side of it. Which means this is going to be a very long ship, even after I bring all that stuff back. We also need more engines as well. We can... Whoop, wait a sec. We can remove those in order. Drain out, assuming there's room. Okay. Uh, empty mat to engine goes about here, I think. Fuel overkill, probably. All right, be gone, water. Didn't waste a single. It's getting slower. Hurry up. I find it funny that this bit's empty. There we go. Didn't waste a single drop. It all gets pushed into the next piece of pipe. Okay. Speaking of which, I kind of do want to consider moving this antimatter stream around. Um, we could put some pumps here, I guess. And move the stuff on the left. our nexus fit not in here that's for sure that would be a nice fit if it did don't say more than enough power within hearing distance of a nexus yeah it's very deceptive how it doesn't say anything about how much power it needs I don't I wonder if it uses more power the faster it's going. Disabled by script. So it's not like it's not like we can see it consuming power here. I wonder if the informatron tells us. Um I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything that might be that information. Alright, it's actually time to finish up the stream for today. Let's see who is playing the Factorio. Mucky, Silent Storm. Uh, Tumbling is just getting started. Thanks for the stream, no worries, thanks for hanging out. No 
early streaming time. Space exploration mod. Here we go. Let's give someone new a go. They're doing space exploration as well. Thank you for the stream. Night, everyone. Take care, Whiskers. Ben Wu. Thanks for hanging out as well. Target, target channel has disabled raids. Well... Uh, I guess. There isn't really a very good fit for what we've been doing. Let's give Silent Storm a go today. Mucky is fine. Yeah, I've, I've raided Mucky a lot. I'm trying to spread it out a bit more. That's all. Thank you all for watching, do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like, if you have any questions or anything by all means. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe. Fantastic. <laughs> take care, guys. Because Liberated we it, so don't have. Yes, that nobody else could have it. There were about uh, 1.6k blue circuits in that base. Thank you, Scout. Right, so mines work quite well against behemoths, by the way.